Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. A warm welcome to all the participants of this fifth webinar series of the Teach Talk. Now, this is the ethics edition of the Linangan Program of the General Education Center of UP Diliman. And then looking at the participants sa Zoom, we are over 900 participants. Magandang umaga ho from people who are coming from Mindanao, Visayas, Luzon, NCR, no? And then people are still logging in. And then dun sa mga suki po ng nilangat linangan webinar series, no? And for the newcomers po, no? Hopefully this today, this morning will be a worthwhile day, no? To engage ourselves in this academic endeavor, no? To live to how to teach ethics in this time of pandemic. I would like to inform everyone that um, so I want I want I am your moderator for today. I am Professor Maria Lisa Ruth Ocampo of the Department of Philosophy, CSSP, and I am presently also the coordinator of the Office of the Graduate Program of the same college. So to officially start our program, I would like to call on our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Maria Teresa Payongayong. Good morning po, visites. Visites, good morning po. Available na ba po si BC Tess for the short message po? Yes, Ma'am Lisa, I'm here. Okay. Good morning po, BC Tess. Good morning. Shall I proceed? Apo. Um, maganda maganda umaga po sa lahat. Um, a recent seminar I attended on internal and external quality assurance organized by the ASEAN QA introduced me to the idea of Industry 4.0 or Industrial Revolution 4 or IR4 uh, that calls for dynamicity and transformation in education post-COVID-19. It talks about how our, our graduates should be, quote-unquote, future-proof. A future-proof graduate is equipped with various skills to be able to face the demands of the future, given various emerging technologies. Taylor's University named 10 of these skill, skills demand as, and I quote, analytical thinking and innovation, active learning and learning strategies, creativity, originality, and initiative, technology, design and programming, critical thinking and analysis, complex problem solving, leadership and social influence, emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving and ideation, and systems analysis and evaluation. The question is, how do universities respond to this demand for skills? In the same seminar, Professor Datuk Dr. Asma Ismail, Chairperson of the Malaysian Qualification Agency Board and President of the Academy of Sciences Malaysia, addressed the participants with a keynote presentation on new quality elements in higher education post-COVID-19. She introduced a new paradigm shift, which is the shift towards values-based education. She said higher education needs to focus on soft skills like flexibility, work ethics, interpersonal and problem solving skills, more than hard skills or the technical management computer skills. Our students may be highly or technically skilled, but the question is, do they know when to use those skills? Do they know where to use those skills? Do they know how to use those skills? Or sometimes we even ask, do our students know whether to use those skills? 
Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chair of the World Economic Forum says, and I quote, the biggest global issue is the continued erosion of trust. For example, why do we even have to think of irregularities when it comes to delivering our classes remotely? Why do we become suspicious of students who would not turn on their videos during synchronous classes? Do we fear that students may not be listening to us and instead playing computer games like Call of Duty? Why do we worry that our students would cheat during online exams? Why do we think about plagiarism and other academic crimes that might be committed in this time of remote teaching and learning? So many questions now, but, but these questions are reflective now of uh, uh, a kind of uh, um, community of inquiry you know, we want instilled in ourselves and develop among our students. So I have so far asked 10 questions. How do universities respond to the demand for skills? Do highly or technically skilled students know when to use their skills? Do they know where to use those skills? Do they know how to use these skills? Do students know whether to use the, their skills? Why do we even have to think of irregularities when it comes to delivering our classes remotely? Why do we become suspicious of students who would not turn on their videos during synchronous classes? Do we fear that students may not be listening to us and instead playing computer games? Why do we worry that our students would cheat during online exams? And lastly, why do we think about plagiarism and other academic crimes that might be committed in this time of remote teaching and learning? Answer to these questions, I believe we will get from the presentations today. Teaching ethics is a very fitting approach to education if it means informing our students of its principles and applications. When applied correctly, it develops most of the skills demand of a future-proof graduate from critical thinking and analysis to complex problem solving skills like problems of poverty, peace issues, electioneering, and the like. Further, teaching ethics means instilling that the bottom line of education should be people and values. As education shifts from face-to-face -to, -face to remote delivery of teaching and learning, and when the pandemic is over, maybe to blended mode, we expect to see the demands of digital economy rising. It is my hope that philosophy through the teaching of ethics could guide people towards the intangibles, towards compassion, respect, mutual care, flexibility, in light of developments associated with the pandemic, and most importantly, towards a values-based education. Thank you very much. Marami pong salamat, Professor Payongayong, VCETES, for that very timely message for every one of us. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our, our first speaker. He is Associate Professor Lumberto Totoy Mendoza, and I will read a bit of his bio note. So Professor Totoy Mendoza is currently an Associate Professor and GE Program Coordinator of the UP Diliman Department of Philosophy. He taught various ethics and philosophy courses in UP Manila and in UP Los Baños. And he completed his PhD in the University of Bergen, Norway. During this pandemic, which we are all living, Professor Mendoza led an extension project that partnered with MSU Jensan in introducing the Community of Inquiry Framework for Teaching Ethics Online. That project eventually led to a co-authored article entitled Community of Inquiry for Distance Education in the Philippines, which, you, which shall be published in the Liman Review special issue on COVID-19. Without further ado, I give you Professor Totoy Mendoza. Salamat po, uh, Ma'am Lisa, and also to Vice Chancellor Payungayo. Uh, Nakaka-inspire po yung inyong introduction at saka uh, incoming message. Mag-share mag screen lang po ako pa enable po ng share screen. Okay. 
Yan. So, uh, again po, uh, salamat hindi lang po sa mga organizers ng, ng uh, G Teach Talk na ito. Uh, pero salamat din po sa mga kapwa kaguro na nagbigay ng panahon uh, para uh, makinig at, at makibahagi sa conversation na ito on Teach Talk Ethics. Uh, teach Talk, Teaching Ethics to Gen Z Students. Uh, actually, yung gusto ko pong isa, uh, yun, na uh, yung akin pong ibabahagi ay uh, nag-benefit din po dun sa extension project na nilid ko in partnership with uh, MSU Jensen. So, medyo progressive po, po yung approach ng aking uh, pagtuturo ng ethics. Tapos yung akin pong nasynthesize, kasama ko rin po dun dito si na VCTES. So, salamat po sa suporta at presensya. So ang ginawa ko po uh, sa aking presentation, uh, sinubukan ko pong gumawa ng outline hindi na nagdodraw dun sa extension project na yon ng Community of Inquiry. Basically, ito po ay pagtuturo ng ethics na nagtatanong, nag, uh, dialogical, tapos ay uh, centered po sa interest ng mga estudyante. Ngayon po, ang audience ko naman po ay hindi estudyante, mga kapaguro. Uh, kahit sa, sa UP po, we just came from Academic East and I'm, just, I'm thankful po for your presence here because it shows na talagang lahat tayo ay sinasabi nga ni uh, Visites, baka uh, we're also trying to make ourselves future proof. Pero feeling ko dapat present proof kasi yung present proof natin ngayon medyo ano po eh uh, baka yung iba po sa atin medyo nasa survival phase pa rin ng ano ng ng transition to remote learning. Pero ang ang gusto ko pong gawing pagbahagi ngayon eh uh, yun nga po masagot ko po sana yung mga question nyo na raise based from these topics that I have generated. So, yung una po, uh, how do we understand Gen Z students and uh, the generation gap? Ayoko pong sabihin na we understand Gen Z students as if they're just the object of learning. Kasi feeling ko po, habang nagtuturo po tayo, natututo rin tayo. No? So, basically, I think it's understanding a generation gap and how, how do we locate ourselves uh, in that relationship. No? Uh, tapos, Uh, may, medyo na baghabag po ako dun sa isang question uh, about uh, the importance of ethics kasi I thought this question is sh should be taken for granted. Meron siyang tinanong, bakit ba kinakailangan nating isama ang ethics sa syllabus ng HEIs o higher education institutions? Uh, papaliwanag ko po ito later in terms of uh, how it contributes, how that discourse contributes to responsible citizenship. No? Uh, tapos, uh, I will give some materials po. Uh, so, yung binanggit po ni VCTES yung tungkol sa walang tiwala yung mga estudyante sa mga teacher. So, ang naging approach ko po sa pag, uh, pagkuha ng kanilang tiwala, uh, hindi dahil sa kailangan ko bilang teacher, pero dahil pare-pareho lang kaming uh, ano pa, uh, nakakaranas ng paghihirap sa remote learning at uh, gustong maging authentic ang aming uh, pagkatuto uh, I generated topics that are of their interest so in some ways po nakabuo po ako ng mga resources that are that cater to their needs so this all I, this will respond to questions on how to engage Gen Z students. No? Tapos, ano po yung mga strategies? Uh, medyo mahaba po kasi yung presentation na gawa ko. Baka some of them I will leave to my younger colleague, uh, Professor Alex Lopez. No? Tapos, meron din pong nagtanong, uh, uh, kailangan po ba na maging fellow graduate ako para makapagturo ako ng ethics? Ano po ba yung qualification for being an ethics teacher? So sige, tignan po natin itong mga katanungan na ito. Again, salamat po sa mga questions na ito kasi I think it helps my helps me prepare this uh, talk in a way that it's uh, also conversational, no? Uh, na, hindi po prefabricated, no? So 
uh, yun nga po, yung isang kata- basahin ko rin po uh, just to acknowledge the the thought that was found in that question. No? So how can I make my students understand the important importance of ethics, especially with Gen Z students who have a different way of thinking and a worldview than previous generations. So, so yung previous generations po, baka tayo po yun uh, bilang, uh, doon nga po sa picture, uh, baka po yung ilan sa atin ay hindi pa talaga ganun ka-comfortable sa, sa screen. Uh, so uh, yung iba po sa atin might prefer a book or a newspaper. Pero yung, like my, my son, I have an eight-year-old son, talagang all his information, uh, yung sa, sa kanyang iPad, no, tablet, no, although as a parent, I, I fear na it has, uh, it has negative consequences. Pero for now, I think we have to accept the fact that the uh, Gen, Z, Gen Z students or, or the, uh, the present generation have a different mode of, of Consu- uh, of get acquiring information no uh, yun nga po uh, <laughs> naalala ko tuloy yung anak ko uh, uh, mas mas magaling pa po yung anak ko sa pagnavigate ng ng iP- ng, ng ng tablet niya kay sa akin tatay you click this and that no so that's an indication of uh, uh, of those who belong to gen z the gen z uh, generation no they're uh, Uh, they're more uh, comfortable with technology, tech savvy, no? Yun nga lang, so ito po yun, kaya lang, yun, yung difference po nila, no? Uh, they're likely to watch a YouTube video than to read a newspaper or a book or a journal article, baka vlog na lang, no? Tapos sabi nga ng iba, baka more on Facebook or TikTok rather than reading. Pero uh, as of now, I'm, I'm hesitating po kasi... Meron po ako mga students na 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 parang na-overwhelm na rin sila sa social media, sa sa internet and they confided to me that sometimes they don't want to they gusto nila ng digital detox and they, then they just get a pen and paper, no? So siguro wag po yung yung characteriza- characterization ng Gen Z uh, students, wag po nating parang Uh, generalize in some sense. Uh, let's also allow for some exception. Pero still, pwede ko natin sabihin na guide siya sa karamihan ng ating mga sudyante. No? Na sabi in one conversation with Mom Tess, no? parang hirap na silang magbasa uh, extensively. Pero they would rather uh, watch a YouTube video or perhaps listen to uh, an audiobook. No? So yung isang article ko pong Uh, nabasa, 8 seconds lang daw po ang attention span, tapos you would lose them, their, uh, no, their attention na, no? So, uh, salamat po, hindi kayo Gen Z students, no? So, I still have your attention. Uh, pero, feeling ko po kasi, we need to innovate our, our lectures na mas interactive, kasi uh, you would listen to my lecture for 30 minutes or so, iba po yun sa watching a video or a, a TikTok na informative no so i wonder if about the extent to which we can collab philosophy teachers ethics teachers can collaborate with ano technology engineers in that sense so yung isang response po dito na baka ipapaliwanag ko later yung how do we develop, how do we teach learning teach ethics in such a way na Uh, bite size po siya no hindi po ma- sila ma information overload ayun uh, nga po lalo na ngayon na uh, ang dami silang sa kanilang nagkakasakit uh, tayo rin po nagkakasakit no tapos may uh, may mga sakop na po pong nangyayari so what would be a reasonable learning material for them to digest given the circumstance no uh, so tapos meron pong nag-comment sa akin na minsan po uh, kinakailangan ng mas kinakailangan ng mga estudyante eh, maging kaibigan din yung teacher no i remember a talk by uh, in in open university yung uh, Dr. Arinto talking about transactional distance no kapag ka po yung air natin ng ng authority eh, mataas pa rin at hindi uh, nahihirapan pong mag-communicate lalo ang mga estudyante sa atin no uh, which is Uh, more difficult in the context of ethics kasi 
kinakailangan ko para sa akin authentic yung kanilang mga sinasabi sa essays at saka sa discussion. Hindi po yung uh, pre-fabricated lamang o kinuha sa book o kin- sinabi lamang para sila yung makapasa. I think that's needed for the for ethics to be truly uh, transformative. No? So yun, binabanggit ko nga po dito na baka ang... Ang understanding Gen Z students is really understanding a generation gap and understanding the ways through which we can communicate and connect with them. them no? Ang pagka-phrase ko po dito, uh, rather than really bring ourselves to the their language or to their mode of understanding, baka po we can meet them halfway. No? Uh, and uh, to be honest, up to now, I'm figuring out how to, how to do that. And Uh, pero in in what ch- in the latter presentations I will give some essays po which I found in- inspiring and which seems to indicate that I'm I'm doing okay no uh, so yung uh, taga UP po ako uh, pero my audience right now and I teach based from a different syllabus pero so I I, I figured I should also draw from the Ched syllabus so uh, This is to answer the question, uh, why include ethics in the syllabus of HEIs? No? Uh, pwede nga po kasi nating sabihin yun na ang ethics uh, pwede pra- nasa private domain. Ng, huwag yun ang pakailaman kung anong tama at mali para sa akin uh, or nasa domain siya ng religion. No? Uh, so, uh, pero uh, I thought nga po, as I mentioned, taken for granted siya. Pero baka po kinakailangan nating balikan kasi napapakinggan ko rin po sa mga kapwa ko guro ng ethics na minsan sobrang draining na ng pagtuturo uh, yung, yung transition to to remote learning kasi iba-iba ho yung circumstance ng bawat student eh. Uh, parang naging mechanical na rin lang no? matapos na lang ang semestre. Uh, I think that would be the death uh, for us teachers kasi uh, I, I, I think part of what it means to teach is to be some dynamic, no, and, and to learn uh, as you go, no. Uh, so yun nga po, kukuha po ako sa Chad Silabus kung bakit mahalaga ang ang ethics, no. Uh, marami pong binabanggit uh, na learning outcomes, pero siguro mag-focus lang po ako dun sa common good, no. Uh, lalo na po sa panahon ngayon na kinakailangan nating magtulungan uh, hindi po pwedeng basta magkanya-kanya tayo given that we have different conceptions of what counts as good magpavaccine tayo o hindi academic ease o hindi no? Bongbong Marcos or Lenny no? I think there is room po for, for reasonable dissent yung hindi lang po tayo ano, magsigawan, magverbal abuse And I think uh, the study of ethics plays a, a very important role in not just for respecting each other, pero ano po, uh, responsible citizenship. No? Uh, yun, medyo marami po akong baggage din na dala dito eh. Kasi uh, kasama po ako dun sa uh, unang nag-fail na, ma, na, na, sa pag-champion ng ng ethics dun sa dun sa dun sa sa university kasi yung isa sorry nag-confide na uh, uh, yung isa pong fear uh, pag nagturo ba kayo ng ethics tuturuan niyo sasabihin niyo sa mga estudyante na pwede silang mag-abortion, pwede silang mag-premarital sex, uh, pwede silang mag-suicide no? Uh, kasi sa ethics po pinag-aaralan yung pro at saka con no. Ang short answer ko po doon kasi uh, uh, making in autonomous judgment is a process of adulting no. Uh, medyo ano po kasi uh, hindi po sa lahat ng pagkakataon kasama po ng mga magulang yung mga yung mga anak nila or mga estudyante to make decisions for them. And when those situations happen, what they have is their own mind, their own judgment. And I think the essence of ethics is to somehow simulate those situations where they can think uh, f- 
from various ethical perspectives to somehow self correct no so so paano yun no uh, pag pag kaya po nila nagagawa yung tinturing natin na mali kasi uh, ano uh, tatakas at may buhay din po sila at uh, pupursu rin po nila yon tatakas at tatakas po sila to pursue their own life no at siguro again nga po what is what does it mean to become a responsible citizen no uh, tapos uh, uh, salam salamat din po sa mga question galing din po yan sa inyo so yung sinasabi ko is merely a response to the questions generated from you so how do we integrate citizenship in teaching ethics uh, tapos how do we uh, do it in the context of this information online tapos halimbawa po ngayon na sama-sama tayong uh, kinakaharap pa rin ang, ang pandemya ang threat ng bumababa na po no pero ano pa, in how do we deal with uh, those who do, do not want to be vaccinated no uh, are some of their reasons uh, reasonable and uh, to what extent can they be counted as legitimate exceptions so, so yun uh, just uh, ito po ay isang example ng bite-sized form of learning ang sabi ko nga po minsan mas magaling po si YouTube kaysa sa akin kasi maikli yung content digested no uh, tapos so usually i start with a video and then i just uh, facilitate discuss a discussion based from that video so uh, i-play ko rin po uh, uh, kasi it also answers the question how ethics is different from morality ethics as a field of study is sort of like a tree with 10,000 branches branches that all disagree with each other with such variances then how do we begin to understand ethics one way to really think about ethics is through its historical meaning which has to do with a person's ethos this is the idea that ethics is connected with character and it's sort of a high standard approach to what it means to act in a particularly cogent way and then there's a more important conceptual distinction a person could make particularly between ethics and morals this is needed because when defining ethics many will use the word morals interchangeably there is however some disagreement among scholars as to the difference between morals and ethics one school of thought asserts that morality is inherently founded on spiritual principles one's responsibility to a supernatural being or goal ethics on the other hand relies on materialist and social consequences not spiritual ones in order to determine what is ethical or not other schools of thought argue that this line between morals and ethics is arbitrary instead they believe ethics is simply a formal branch of philosophy that concerns itself with the study of morals and their derivation this group would assert that ethics is a philosophy of morals we posit that ethics is not the same thing as morality consider for example how arbitrary moral stances tend to be especially when they're outside of one's own culture or religious beliefs what may seem justifiable in one culture can easily be problematic in another in addition being ethical is not simply following a law or rules that have been established in fact some of our most revered historical slash modern figures not only disagreed with laws and rules they deemed to be unethical but also fought against them and in some cases it cost them their lives ethics rather emphasizes the responsibility and capability of the individual to come to his or her own conclusions through reasoning and to determine which principles are relevant in a particular case they are well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans ought to do usually in terms of rights obligations fairness or specific virtues ethics is the reasonable obligation for us to refrain from hurting others living ethically also requires the continuous effort of studying our own beliefs and conduct and striving to ensure that we and the institutions we help to shape live up to standards that are reasonable and evidence-based it is knowing that before we can do the right thing one has to figure out what the right thing is <laughs> so ang ganda po no uh, so ethics is uh, yun, uh before is 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 somehow figuring out that uh, before we can do the right thing 
we have we somehow to this we have we have to reflect on what is the right thing no uh, tapos may distinction din po dito dun sa ethics and morality no yung mores na somehow established or fixed po with certain groups which includes religion to some extent which uh, so may meron po asing question na uh, to what extent should we include religion uh, in the teaching of ethics i think it can definitely uh, be included uh, i hope uh, ma'am ma lisa the moderator can share uh, some things about it kasi alimbawa si Saint, Saint Thomas Aquinas but I think the also the approach of ethics is to draw from different perspectives uh, as a way of overcoming our confirmation bias or or thought bubbles no so uh, siguro po yun uh, for now uh, ethics sorry uh, ito po yung isang example ng short video na interactive tapos to be honest, medyo traditional pa rin po ako in the sense that I was brought up not really watching videos, pero reading very long articles. Uh, so what I do is uh, up upload an article that students might read, pero I would now remember, I would now hear my son saying, fat chance, tatay, no? Uh, kasi they won't, they won't read it given their situation unless you give a, an assessment exam on that reading, no? Uh, and minsan po, uh, talagang burdensome din naman po sa teacher yung pag-check, tapos iba na po yung sitwasyon. Minsan buong pamilya na may COVID, no? So yung three minutes video would be enough. Uh, hindi naman, uh, pero yun nga, I, I, I suggest we give them a choice. No? So dito po sa article na to, uh, may distinction na between morality that is customary. Siguro ito po yung pwede natin associate sa mores kanina. Tapos yung reflective morality na yung morality that came out because of because it was informed, criticized, and, and tested. No? So ang isang opinion ko po dito bilang isang teacher ng ethics hindi ka po dapat masyadong majargon uh, 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 or or kung hindi siya escapable kaya mo pong i-translate in layman no so um halimbawa yung autonomous decision how is it related to uh, gen z students adulting no ganun po uh, sa totoo lang po natututunan ko rin po ito sa pakikipag-usap sa aking mga estudyante no uh, naalala ko tuloy yung sabi ni Ma'am Tess na perhaps na uh, making making our students future proof pero palagi ko pati rin po tayo uh, we should try to make ourselves uh, future proof in that sense tapos ito po yung so ang ang ethics po hindi sa dami ng tinuro pero how you process the content that was given no so pagkatapos po nito nagkaroon kami ng discussion on what is ethics for them tapos nagkaroon po ng sharing Magko-confess po ako na ang, uh, ang ginagamit ko po at that time and perhaps to some extent up to now, Facebook. Kasi naka-attend po ako ng isang training dun sa UPLD which offered Facebook as a tool for flexible learning. Unang-una dahil nandyan na, tapos medyo okay po yung interface niya. Iniiwasan ko na po ito ngayon because of some privacy issues. Uh, uh, doon po sa mismong ethics class ko na meron kaming topic on how Facebook experimented on its users. No? Um, Self-contradictory naman na ginagamit ko yung Facebook uh, tapos unethical pala siya. Pero note po doon sa discussion, nilagay ko po, uh, this is confidential and it is meant for members of the class alone. Tapos ang ganda po ng sharing nila, no? uh, ethics uh, is best experience by asking questions and it is a kind of social discussion no? so in the tradition of ano po uh, socrates no uh, uh, it, it's not bookish but it, well i do, i i love books but books come from real life experience po no uh, minsan nga lang po uh, uh, yun nga yung problema natin baka outdated na po yung experience natin kaya mas mahalaga po yung 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 social yung social yung discussion yung discourse tapos meron din pong binanggit dito uh, uh, ethics is also about making our decision choices informed 
Tapos dun po dun sa dulo, talks about how the good and bad involves a spectrum, uh, a spectrum of good and evil. No? Ang galing po, in the first first day of class, uh, for, uh, I think first two meetings, students had this insight. So nakaka-inspire po para, para sa akin. No? Uh, with just that, with just with that three minute video no so feeling ko po ang danger ng ng remote learning or distance learning uh, hindi po natin maitatanggi na nasanay tayo sa face to face classes tapos hindi po natin ma, ma, maiwanan yung nakasanayan natin no uh, as if uh, at especially in the context of philosophy and ethics courses as if uh, the content itself is in the in the text pero I, I i a part of me really believes that it is in the discourse and uh, kaya nga po mahalaga yung the students trust you and that because that will allow you to communicate with them no so na uh, siguro po babalikan ko na lang po ito uh, sig- baka i could end na rin po pala dito to uh, yung iba na lang ay Uh, by, by reading this uh, uh, reflection from a student. No? So, bukod, meron po kasi ako sa, at the beginning of the class, uh, what is ethics for them, tapos ethics from the video, tapos at the end of the semester, tinatanong ko rin po sila, uh, ano po yung natutunan na, na nila about ethics based from the lectures and discussion. No? So, sabi nila, I could describe the process of ethics as something like a like skydiving no uh, before participating so may, parang may karanasan na po siya sa skydiving galing naman uh, before may metaphor no? before participating in this interesting sport one must first undergo extensive training which includes lessons on proper posture skills and even on how to handle a parachute the training that skydivers undergo can be likened to the forming of discovering of values, principles, and purposes in ethics. After training the, training, the person will then be assessed to know whether he is qualified to skydive. Once the assessment is completed, actual skydiving can be performed. For first-timers, feeling incredibly on edge while deciding to take the jump may be inevitable. In relation to ethics, Taking the jump is the same as committing to their values and principles when making choices and decisions. If the skydiver is well-trained and is mentally prepared for the activity, his skydiving experience will be smooth and overall fulfilling. In the same way that an individual who is confident about the values he is committed to can make well-contemplated decisions. On the other hand, if the skydiver is not confident about the values he is committed uh, on the other hand, if the skydiver is not well trained and is not mentally prepared, complications during the activity may occur. For instance, the skydiver diver may experience a delay in setting up the parachute or may not be able to set it up at all, thus leading to possible unwanted accidents, perhaps even death. No? This can be likened to individuals who are not confident in committing to their formed value. So ito po nagsishift na siya from skydiving to uh, what, he, what she learned in ethics. I was able to relate my analogy about skydiving on ethics through the lectures I have learned in class as well. To give an example of how I... Uh, uh, in Mr. X's discussion of his paper, COVID-19, Vax, Hesitate, or Vaccinate, He centralized on the ethical principle of utilitarianism, which implies that an action is right or moral if it leads to the happiness of the greatest amount of individuals within a group or society. Despite being vaccine hesitant himself, he chose to commit the, to the aforementioned ethical principle, ultimately influencing his thought process and decisions. This was manifested when he was able to realize the impact of choosing not to vaccinate to a greater number of individuals, even relating it to the trolley problem, causing him to value the importance. Uh, yeah. Because of this, he was able to make a well-contemplated stand on vaccination, 
and ultimately form insightful realizations on the current pandemic situation of our country and the needs of Filipinos. So ito po yung uh, isa kong kasagutan na kasi feeling ko ethics can help students uh, face these kinds of situations. No? Um, mahaba pa po yung aking mga PowerPoint pero ibabrowse through ko na lang po. Uh, yung sagot ko po sa uh, uh, question, uh, po, issue na ni-raise ni Ma'am Tess on how we, we gain the trust of students. I think it happens when we pursue topics that are of their interest. No? Ito po yung mga naging topics sa class ko. Remote learning as a means to education or a means to production. No? Uh, kasi naisip na lang po ng mga estudyante, at least at that time, uh, na parang mechanical na lang o kailangan lang nila yung degree. No? Uh, lalo na nung may call for parang ano, call for compassion na minsan na, na-equate sa ipasan nyo na lang kahit medyo walang masyadong natutunan. Tapos yung issue ng daily grind na feeling nila mahalaga lang sila dahil may ginagawa sila uh, tapos dahil lang sa grades nila no uh, parang hindi kayang magpahinga uh, tapos uh, I collaborated with other professors like Professor Karaan talk about Kantian ethics in terms of public health no so halimbawa yung yung halimbawa po yung when we talk about yung, yung sipon po kasi natin ngayon hindi lang sipon natin eh pwedeng uh, COVID na ng iba parang ganun so Uh, how do we relate that to uh, uh, respecting others? Uh, tapos utang na loob. Uh, by, by the way, meron nga po pala. So yan, I invite them to class to share their reflections. Kahit po tapos na yung klase, bumabalik pa rin sila. Uh, para may, may consent naman po yung aking estudyante. Uh, uh, tapos I also, ins- uh, I also invite friends. Uh, to talk about contemporary uh, who are experts in their field. Halimbawa po si Director Parafina who's an e- expert on governance ethics and so he, ma- he made a talk on community pantry. Tapos, so basically, ano, ah, yun, uh, yung, ito po yung stakeholder, yung extension project namin. Uh, uh, yung shiner lang po ng mentor namin nito, uh, Dean Lina, When we teach ethics, uh, perhaps we should really t- we're teaching not not really for ourselves, for, but for our students, no? Hindi lang yung maibahagi natin kung anong nararamdaman natin. Pero mapakinggan natin sila tapos matulungan natin maprocess yung pinagdadaanan nila. It just so happened na yung partner university po namin at that time is MSU and their concern the concern of their students With, is peace so we developed uh, we, uh i think it's still in progress a module on peace studies no tapos nandun po siya sa uh, website po ng uh, department of philosophy meron po kaming youtube page uh, so uh yun lamang po uh, for now tapos um uh, I'll, i'll end my presentation to give room po Uh, to the other presenter. I, I, I'm hoping to share some of my answers po later in the Q, some of my other insights in the Q&A. So, salamat po. Marami pong salamat, Professor Totoy Mendoza. No? Thank you for opening horizons and sharing your experiences no, with our colleagues no, from, Mind- from Luzon to Mindanao. No? At this particular point, we are more than 1,000 participants no, in the Zoom no, link in this particular webinar. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the second speaker. He is... Alexander Atreo Lopez, he is an instructor at the Department of Philosophy, Social of CSSP, no? College of Social Sciences and Philosophy of UP Diliman, where he has taught 12 different courses, including general education courses like Ethics 1 and philosophy major courses like Philosophy 171, which is Ethics. 
He has been a resource person and facilitator for different national and international training programs and events for teachers and students of philosophy and bioethics. He first co-authored international, his first co-authored international publication is on ethics of scarce resources during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. He is currently finishing his MA philosophy thesis on consciousness, identity, and mental illness in UP Diliman. So from the same institution, he graduated with a BA philosophy degree, summa cum laude, and he was the valedictory speaker of the 2016 general commencement exercises of UP Diliman. His first undergraduate degree is BS Basic Medical Sciences from UP Manila. His research interests include ethics, philosophy of the mind, and aesthetics. Without further ado, I give you Mr. Alex, Mr. Alex Lopez. Thank you very much, Dr. Ocampo. I hope everyone can hear me. And also, I, before I begin, I want to thank uh, the GE Center, uh, Ma'am Cha, Dr. Nancy Gabriel, um, uh, Sir Kenrick, who was also in fellow with me, and of course, uh, BC Tess and uh, Dr. Mendoza. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. And I continue to, to be grateful for the privilege to learn from you guys and to, to everyone in the audience. And even the questions were very informative and also our tech run yesterday i learned a lot from from everyone so let me start sharing my screen now okay there and let's go to slideshow so it looks like it's a lot but but some of these are just outline slides and i'm just gonna continually look at my stopwatch so i'll end on time Okay, so good morning again, everyone. So roughly my presentation is divided into two parts, one on content and one on methodology. So there is a temptation to, to present a frame from, the, from the, the good place, but I'm not going to do that because I suppose a lot of you all already know what the good place is. So I'm going to use different frames from different shows, which might be more obscure. This also sharing my interest as a film nerd. This is coming. This is from an upcoming show on Netflix. It's called uh, Merly, and it's about a philosophy student. So I hope this is a good one, Netflix. Okay, so on content, I'm just going to talk about um, a few assumptions that we can start our syllabus with, and then a few strategies for, for the syllabi, and how we can make the, the syllabus more interdisciplinary because for example in in the up system one of the one of the objectives for the design of the ethics one syllabus is that it be interdisciplinary and that not only people from ethics will be able to teach it so i'm just going to go to the next one so so let me flesh out the content outline so this is what we're going to talk about for the preliminaries these are things that you would want to start your ethics class with well usually and I think this is, these are also covered by your Ethics 1 syllabus by Ched. So we start with the definition, the branches of ethics, which I'm not going to go into, what, 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 what the inequivalences are for ethics, like what is ethical is not necessarily legal, traditional, etc. But I do have slides for the next four bullets. I, I think this is very important. There are a lot of questions on how you would differentiate philosophy itself or a philosophical study versus the methodology of other branches of knowledge. So I do spend some time on that and I want to share what I explain with regard to that topic. And also, I like explaining to my students why I do the assessment or the evaluation I do in my class, why I include that in the syllabus. When I was a student, I appreciated it when my profs did that. So, mas motivated ako. Okay, hindi lang to pagtataray ng prof sa akin. So, meron palang point yung ginagawa to sa klase niya. And also, importance of ethics. But but BC Tess and Sir Toto have already mentioned a lot of important things on this one. And I want to, to end the preliminary with the importance of theoretical research. This looks like a lot, but but it's not really, especially since a lot of you or all of you already know these things, I think. On the right side is a frame from... From the 2003 Dogville by Lars von Trier, I'm going to butcher a lot of these pronunciations. I'm sorry. Like We can usually start with a quote. I love this quote. It reminds me of commenting on how feasible your ethical system is. Should that be, should that be taken into account on, on how good an ethical system is, whether, whether the norms that the ethics prescribes are realistic or not? So this is, a, this is a quote that speaks to me as a philosopher. So let's go to methodological differences. So of course, there's a descriptive and the prescriptive part of a study. 
you can describe how a person uh, reasons morally, the, like the moral stages of development, as your Chad syllabus uh, tells you to discuss, for example, but there's also the prescriptive part. It's one thing to describe how we reason and how we behave. It is an, it's another thing to prescribe how we ought to behave, for example. So I do try to focus on the prescriptive part when differentiating um, because that's like more of the meat of why we do ethics. So yung pinakaiba for me yung ano yung basihan ng prescription mo. So legality will prescribe, for example, according to legislation, EOs, the constitution, etc., Of course, there are overlaps here. There are very, very important overlaps here. Like, For example, religion, we would usually um, get our authority from the sacred texts and traditions. But also, for instance, your, your Thomist scholars, your important Catholic medieval scholars uh, would see theology as a marriage, as a very good synthesis of reason and faith, fides and ratio. Okay, so we have those nuances here that can also be introduced for our class. And tradition, yeah, so it's according to age-old practices. I Okay, one of my... In my six years of teaching, I've had this attitude of being somewhat centrist and and, and compromising. I've grown to I, I've had the privilege of studying under different kinds of scholars in the department. The ones who focus on theory, the, the ones who focus on applied work, the ones who focus on analytic philosophy, the ones who focus on, on continental philosophy, or the ones who focus on Western philosophy versus Filipino or Asian philosophies. So I've gotten to appreciate the strengths and weaknesses of these approaches. Um, and I introduced these new ones in my class as well. So that's why I have all these disclaimers. It's like, like when you're writing a research paper and all these footnotes. So I, 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 I need also to warn myself that I'm not discussing a research paper sometimes because, yeah, all of all these disclaimers. So yun lang po. Palaging, usually may disclaimer naman sa philosophical discourse. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat, for example, hindi lahat ng traditional mali, hindi lahat ng traditional tama. We have all these nuances and context to be worried about. Um, we, we, we want to remember how, how application is context-bound. Okay, and also... Culture prescribes according to certain boundaries. And okay, especially here, the term science can be rather contentious with the second to the last bullet. Like, of course, your quote-unquote hard scientists would have a view of what they do as scientific work. And um, uh, ancient Greece, well, diba? may have a term na science. Eh. I, I was a student for a very brief time under Dr. Ahampo, if she remembers. And the, the importance has really drilled on me on the importance of primary sources. For instance, if, if at, how does an author translate secondary source yun, di ba? How does he translate or she translate from, from a primary work? And it's in ancient Greek. Yung science, ba nang ginamit na term from, from techne, from, uh, from episteme. So, so, ang hirap nito, of course, during the medieval period, there's also a way that the term science is used. And social scientists may have a different view of science. But if we're talking about the contemporary period that's influenced by the development of, say, physics and chemistry from the modern era in philosophy and in the history of thought, we would want to focus on yung empirical, statistical, quantitative experimentation that they have. Of course, the lines can be blurred. We have experimental philosophy. Is that philosophy? Is that psychology? That's very controversial. Now, then, so we go to, to ethics itself. It prescribes according to logical reason, which is why I also bring into the four logic uh, later on. So here is related conceptual analysis, how defining terms is very important. Again, not exclusive to philosophy. Science defines what molecules are, what atoms are. Uh, the law defines what, for example, abortion is. Um, uh, Dr. Mendoza told, about, uh, told us about that, for instance. And different territories and different laws will, would have different definitions for these. So the Socratic method is related to this. Yung meron tayong stereotype as philosopher, just pag gising ko kanina ng alas, nagising ako ng 3 a.m., like there was this popular blog, why do... academicians hate philosophers. Oh, do they hate us? Kind of, sometimes. Because we have this stereotype of this very confrontational, very aggressive, uh, argumentative people. I try to also... I try to also be aware of that. Minsan kasi naka-carried away tayo. Alaw natin na merong reason yung sinasabihin natin. So, nandun yung force eh. But, but, but lalo na now, no? For, for the Gen Z, which I have a slide later on, uh, I would want to be more aware of how I talk. 
and how I was raised in a different way, in a different educational background. So yung point ng Socratic method, hindi para mga away, hindi para magyabang sa ibang tao. At yung point ng paggamit ng jargon, it's not to confuse other people. Ad hominem yan, but, but, but we want to explain what ad hominem is because I tell my students, not everyone has the privilege of studying college like we do, especially philosophy. Before you philosophize, you need food, for example. So it's very hard to have an elitist stand on people who don't have philosophical understanding Standing, especially especially in a third world culture where people are literally concerned with getting the ne- where they are getting the food that they will eat the next day the next meal so the analysis of definitions is related to that so yeah logic is not exclusive to ethics scientists use logic philosophy of science is very aware of that and ethics is help is help rather by all of these disciplines so para lang malino kasi palaging tanong niya ang pinagkaiba ng pilosopiya dun sa iba of course mayroong philosophy of philosophy may meta philosophy uh, isa pang komplikadong diskurso now um why do why do i use things that, that i do in the classroom for example why study others definition of morality when i can just come up with my own or look at it at the dictionary i was in my third year of teaching in 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 one major course and one student approached me after class like uh, like said bakit ito ito yung tanong niya no but hindi na lang po tayo tumingin sa dictionary um buti na lang maganda yung tulog na ako na yun. hindi ko alam kung nagjojoke siya o hindi pa mang babatahin ko ba siya na eraser like of course not that's a joke okay if you're watching that's a joke okay so yung ba sobrang curious siya and so yeah no oh nga no that's i think that's a legitimate question why and my answer here is now i now put this in the standard introduction introductory slides because dun sa third bullet looking at the dictionary won't help you solve a dilemma as much as studying philosophy that's why people have a misconception ano bang pinagkaiba ng for example ng utilitarianism sa hedonism for example hindi ba parehong pleasure yan but but that's because sometimes these people look at a dictionary uh, a philosophy article with the one paragraph definition of utilitarianism and hedonism so wala ka talagang makukuhang new ones doon so kaya uh, di ba may point yung libro may point yung libro may point yung dictionary to keyword introduce to you something or to make you recall something also we don't want to start from scratch also ang hirap magyabang na original yung idea natin na hindi natin alam na, na, na si Plato pala sinabi niya na yon nung unang panahon. So these are reasons why to study dead people. Okay, now I'm not going to explain this, but I just want to say, I know that there are certain schools who are that are more flexible with their syllabi and curriculum at meron silang formal logic, like not in ethics one, well, sometimes. But if I know that the students are more advanced, I try to insert formal logic there, proving, etc. to prove the validity of certain argumentation from, from the authors, if I know that the students can handle it. Why study primary text? We we know this. We know this. But um, baka hindi alam nung... Merong ano, no? May anti-intellectual air na mas malakas ngayon sa lipunan natin, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, maski sa West. So, um, I I want to reinforce why being smart is not a bad thing. Being arrogant is a bad thing. But you can be arrogant even if you're smart or not smart. It's a different thing, being arrogant and being smart. And it used to be a good thing. Growing up, it used to be a good thing. Hindi ka mahihiya na matalino ka. So, pero ngayon, parang mahihiya ka naman sabihin ka, ang galing mo naman, ang talino mo naman. Siguro isang magandang sagot, thank you for the compliment. I try hard. Okay, so being smart should be a good thing um, as long as it's, it's not being arrogant. So so part of that is, is distinguishing primary and secondary sources. Um, a lot of us get our sources from the secondary stuff. I, I do have a, a balance of primary and secondary in my class, but I always put the emphasis on the primary because there are very popular sources of secondary knowledge that are wrong. They say that um, Plato said this, but it's not true. I, 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 and these are uh, YouTube videos, for example. There are good ones, of course. There's a very big meme group, philosophy meme group on Facebook. And then when I entered it, one of my students uh, invited me and I was seeing the, the memes. W- wow, this is a list of memes of how not to interpret the philosophers. And the people inside naman are very, very aware of that. So we, we go back to the importance of primary. I was talking about the nuances of translation, for example, earlier from ancient. Hindi po ako mabunong mag-ancient Greek. Okay, pero natutunan ko tong nuances na to sa, sa grad school, for instance. Yeah. So, and in this, this is important. Why write long papers? I'm not going to be a philosopher, but but look at the Harry Potter books. 
I now we now teach the generation na yung iba sa kanila ay hindi kilala. Si Harry Potter, maybe it's more of a me 30, 35-year-old generation. Okay, so, but you don't need to go to books. Go to manga, for example. The series of manga dun sa image sa right. Like, iba yung mahabang story sa maikli. Minsan mainam yung maikli, minsan mahiba yung ma- mainam yung mahaba. And well, may Twitter ka naman eh. So, so do, go do your Twitter thing. Like, but here we're gonna write a text that is more than a, a certain number of characters. Of course, we want to say that you know, if you want to prepare for, for, your, for your thesis, for grad school, professional school, academic or research work, um, grades still matter. It's not the only basis of performance, but they still do matter because you know when you go to MA uh, admissions, they will look at your grades. I tell that to my students. Okay, so why study ethics when I can do something more practical and important? Uh, just to add to what our to my senior faculty have mentioned, Well, ethics is practical and important. And the pandemic has given us the situation where it is so important. Like the pandemic is the real life trolley problem. Okay, like should an 80-year-old not be given scarce medical resources for COVID-19? That's your real life trolley problem right there. And this is my favorite because I still don't know uh, I still don't know what to do with beggars. Lan na ngayon, no? mas madaming uh, mas madaming tawag dito. Uh, beggars sa, sa lipunan kasi siguro nawalan sila ng trabaho. Like, bibigyan mo ba sila ng limos? So, hindi. Of course, it's illegal. Actually, technically. Of course, not necessarily legal equals moral. Um, okay. Yes, someone just chatted. Okay. Uh, let me get back here. Yes. Okay. So, sinasabi ko, yun, no? Um, are you supporting their their habit of not getting work? But you don't know that. Na maybe they have tried to, to get work. Or yung iba doon, member ng sindikato, for example, do I have to investigate every beggar before I give my alms? But but why is this important? So this is such a personal thing, a personal day-to-day thing. I tell my students because that has social significance. You are the future leaders of this country. What will happen in the future when you are a lawmaker, for example, and different sectors of society society are making limos from you. We want more money for the educational sector. We want more money for the health sector. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm using the word limos in a very controversial way. If it's your right, then you shouldn't make limos for it. So meron yung implikasyon. At, at mas insidious to. Kasi akala natin yung pag-define ng konsepto ng mabalidad, hindi mahalaga. Pero araw-araw natin siyang ginagawa. Yung limang pisong ibibigay mo dun sa nanlilo mo sa'yo, pwedeng yan lang yung source niya literally ng pagkain from, for the whole day. And what will happen when you are a leader already controlling funds? Um, you can control funds to select which kinds of research you will prioritize. HIV research, infectious disease research, etc. And your morality will guide you towards the decision that you will make. You might not be facing that dilemma right now, but this is the privilege that we have also of values clarification. It is a privilege because we have the time to think of these things in this classroom so that when you are confronted with the dilemma in the future, you will be ready. And you can explain not only to yourself, but to other people, to your constituents, why that is your decision and why that is the correct decision without resorting to ad hominem, without resorting to violence. Because after all, we are all rational people. Okay. And and lastly, for let me go back to my timer. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm still on time. Lastly, okay, we... Uh, there is, especially working in UP, no? the, the kinds of research that we do, okay. there is a rift between different types of philosophizing, between the pure and the applied, the continental and analytic. Again, I appreciate all of these. I've studied under different kinds of scholars. Thank you very much, senior faculty. But I want to say that something that is deemed non-practical now may be important later. I learned in my STS class all the way from UP Manila with my first degree that Yung, yung research ng NASA, kinukriticize sila. Why are you spending millions of dollars or even billions during the 70s sending people to the moon? We, have, we still have people who can't eat three times a day in America, for example. But these are all some of the benefits that we got from space research. Um, also, yung communications technology with satellite TV, etc. The point being is that hindi, mahirap mag-predict kung ano yung useful in the future. At kung wala nang venue sa lipunan kung saan pwedeng mag-fund ng theoretical research, uh, kung hindi pa sa akademiya, saan pa? Um, once upon a time, people were saying it's impossible to go to the moon, but now we can. 
So that is that that should be a strength of philosophy that remains, that it challenges boxes, so that the boxes that we are constricted in right now, and that will be shattered in the future. There was a question a while ago of how fast we should be accommodating ourselves for the changes of technology. That's why these boxes should be challenged. And that's why I like philosophy. Philosophy has its own boxes, but we shouldn't stop ourselves from cons constricting towards different disciplines. May strengths and there's the new ones of the strengths and weakness of each approach. Okay, just very quick for syllabi structures. If you have more leeway or flexibility with, with, your, with your institution or as a teacher, these are some of the structures that you can adopt for your syllabi structure. Yung pinaka-usual yung nasa first bullet, which Ched follows, and this makes a lot of sense. You start with, with your definition, which what I did earlier with, with examining assumptions, what is the relationship between free will and responsibility, for example, moral development. Then you go to the traditional branches, metaethics, normative. I sometimes, sometimes I try to flip this because it's easier to start with something very much more concrete and contextual. So I can start with normative first and how the meta-ethical meta theories will comment on the normative theories. And then you go to your applied. Don't forget your Filipino content. Or, or you could do is, mas mas obvious yung applied, Kunyari, today's meeting, utilitarianism. Next meeting, applied, like abortion, ganyan, or something else. This next meet, uh, meeting after that, uh, can't. So parang uh, normative or theoretical, this applied. Ganun yung alternate. Pwede historical. There are less books on this because it's so hard, right? Like, and dami kasing ethical theories. Kita mo naman bakit yung standard yung first bullet eh. You can see the relationship between normative theory one and normative two, how, how consequentialist yung utilitarianism and hindi yung Kantian deontology. So may ganun relationship. But, but it might be harder to tie these things up in a historical approach. But there are books that, that, that deal with that. For example, like tawag dito, uh, John Rawls' Lectures in the History of Moral Philosophy. And yung last, if you're more of an applied philosopher, you can... Focus on applied uh, topics and then take that as jumping off points for theory. And it really depends on our strengths, individual strengths as well, and research areas. Okay, and yung last, yung interdisciplinary content for, for the content portion of this lecture. Um, yeah, so tawag dito. Yeah, um, there are a lot of... In my experience, the more beginner the students are, the more appreciative of they are of the, of the broadness of the syllabus. Kasi parang, syempre, hindi mo pa alam na yung, yung i-encounter mo sa pilo. So mas may chances na merong topic na magugustuhan nila kung mas marami. But of course, you have to balance it with death as well. That's very important. At itimplahin natin yun as the instructors. But you have your usual standard applied areas there that can be a mixture in your class. And also, yung last pwedeng may dedicated uh, may dedicated for example meeting like you can invite like, like Sir Toto invite certain uh, experts uh, invite an anthropologist and talk about how anthropology contributes to the study of ethics for example and and that's that's with the content and how about methodology I I want to I want to mention just a few specific activities I, I have for for the normative theories and then a very short a portion on assessment and delivery. Okay, for ETU methodology, ko, uh, the, the past two pictures are from video games. My growing up video, I recently learned of that term, growing up video game. The video game that you played while growing up. It's This is my intertextual approach of, of getting stimuli from different kinds of media. Okay, so let's go to, uh, for utilitarianism, so I learned from the tech teaching and effectiveness course of UP about their work. And, and the, the teachers here more know about that and sure the ad hoc people than I do. So you, you make them answer the trolley problem. Why pair work for, let's say, one minutes, two minutes. And then you, you ask someone, okay, share your answer. One from those who answer one thing and then at least one from, from another person who answers another thing. Via Zoom, you can use a poll or a different application. And also in tech, I did this demo. So sabi ko, oh, magbigay kayo ng ethical dilemma. So ibang teachers ng UP yung kasama ko. And then may nagsabi na, should you eat, should you eat pizza with pineapple? I'm like, okay, let's do that. Let's, let's apply this. I do this table. So I do let them study Bentham because, because as a past debater, this is helpful eh. Like, kapag tong policy na to, ano yung effect na si intensity, duration, etc. Of course, there are a lot of ways of doing this. But, but I, like, I do like to diagramatize when possible and to, to steps, to make them steps. But again, we have to introduce new ones here. We might be introducing a box to them. 
Okay. So, but but the last one would oh yeah the the teacher who who evaluated me the senior one told me na nagustuhan niya na hindi ko tinibialize yung pineapple pizza um thought process and I was surprised okay na meron palang ganong dimension don okay na even that you can try to make it a utilitarian dilemma for example okay so the last one would be my students like this a lot be a god committee yun if if you don't know um just just in case you don't know yung yung na-develop yung organ transplant technology ng 60s and 70s, nagkaroon ng God Committee. Those who will select, who will get the organ first. Since hanggang ngayon, marami pa rin namamatay na gusto ng organs. Na like kidney, for example, yung pinakamaraming demand. So I tell my students who are group, each one of you is gonna be a God Committee. And then from each group then kukuha tayo ng patient. You will have one to two minutes, yung bawat patient, you can make up your story, and then you will tell the God Committee why you need to get the kidney. And so this is an exercise on utilitarianism. And the one who wins, pagbabotohan ng lahat ng God Committee, ay bibigyan natin ng kidney, which is a bottle of stick O, which I don't do now, because I don't want to deliver, grab, deliver to them stick O. So they do like that, and they can be very creative with their responses there, with their stories. Yung iba may background music pa, habang nagsasalita sila kung bakit sila yung kapapat dapat magkaroon ng kidney. Okay, now for for Kant, uh, yeah, konti lang kasi, why? Because it takes a lot of time discussing Kant. So I have the usual pair work, for example, yung classic experiment, will you save the, will you lie to save your friend's life? Of course, we, we probably all know this in introducing Kant. And then again, I, it can be a Zoom poll online, and then I ask some students to share why. But but this is something you can do, which I haven't done, actually. What happens when you universalize something? Because it's pretty similar to my role's activity later on. Well, this is a frame from Great Men Academy, a 2019 Thai series on Netflix. It's such a philosophical question related to Kant. Okay, so, and, and going to the natural moral theory. So this is another one that people like. So... I asked them to show me a picture of someone virtuous and then give theories to tell them virtues. It can be a fictional character. It can be a dead character, for instance. And, and also, I want to tickle them with, are there distinctly Filipino virtues, for example? Uh, there are Filipino philosophy scholars here like uh, Dr. Payongayo and kailangan ko pang mag dito. And uh, also, this one, what is natural for you? Give an example of something natural. Kasi, for example, before I go to this to this frames here, like um in, in my thesis that I work under Dr. Payongayong, for instance, I was talking about natural moral law. And how, what are the different conceptions of how you can define natural? Siyempre, may sabiling, may classical yun, of course, di ba? For example, if you say natural according to what is usual, yung nakaputol sa baba, bell curve yan eh. Kasi pinapakita ko, pinapabilize ko yung nuances ng statistical definition of normality. So I do this census with them. And then I tell them, okay, if, if natural equals, equals quantitative, then ito yung natural sa inyo. It's natural na mas immoral yung, for example, uh, mas moral rather yung, yung abortion kaysa sa immoral siya, for instance. But what happens, kunyari sa student-teacher relationship sa baba, medyo shocking yung, yung result. What if 13 yung moral, bumoto ng moral, 14 immoral? You can see yung perils ng quantitative basis, yung relativistic basis ng morality. Kung nagdedetermine talaga siya sa kung ilang tao yung magsasabi kung ano yung moral o hindi. Kasi ang, ang lapit, no? Ganun, so parang, what if 13, 13 yun? So how do you decide what is moral or immoral, for example? So these are the nuances, for example, if you have a relativistic thinking or depending on your definition of what natural is. And here is, because my question about Shemper, the relationship of ethics with religion. I have I've had an interesting journey in relationship with faiths of different kind and or the absence of it. But I've grown to appreciate the role of faith even from a secular basis. Uh, for example, I, I teach in Pillow One uh, existential ethics, uh, for instance, but even from a secular point of view, faith is very important. This is from, I think, 2001, 13 conversations about one thing by, by the Spectre sisters. Para, kunyari tatawid ka, you need faith na hindi ka mabangga eh. Like, faith is something that, that needs to be operative in our daily lives, even from a non-religious point of view. And again, from my, my, my compromising way of thinking, um, there are strengths and and advantages and disadvantages of a people, for example, with faith, what specific kind of faith, and people who are not living with a certain kind of faith. And 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 I like it when when my when my students engage in this and when we can have a civil discussion about these different sides. Okay, so uh, this is the last normative theory for roles. 
So I teach Rawls for, for contractarianism. One of the most important criticisms against Rawls, just, just for a review, um, this is after all in the Ched syllabus, the, the reading on Rawls, a theory of justice, is that diba, oh, thought experiment, social contract. Itong policy ba na to, dapat natin i-promote? Or itong constitution ba na to, okay to, just ba to? So thought experiment, when you're building a society, would the people approve of this constitution, for example? Okay. Um, but also, for Rawls, there's the veil of ignorance, di ba? Doon sa society na binibuild mo, hindi mo alam kung magiging babae ka, LGBT ka, PWD, pogi, maganda matalino, etc. So you're gonna sort of legislate for that society. So I give my groups one group, one kind of citizen only. Ito lang yung, ito lang yung society na binibuild mo. Ano yung rules na gusto mo for a women-only society, for example? Tapos yung last group, yung any. Um, what is my intent here? Because the criticism is that When, when you have the veil of ignorance for roles, hindi mo alam kung ano yung contextuality mo sa lipunang ginagawa mo, you're not legislating uh, rules for people. Because being a woman, being a farmer, those are important features of humanity, of a specific person. If you remove those contextual features, you remove humanity. What are you legislating for? Some abstract kind of non-human citizen. Okay, when I was studying, fortunately, under a role scholar in the department, Okay, I came to realize that when I was thinking of, of, the, of the social contract with the veil of ignorance, I was not stuck at the theoretical level because I do not know whether I will become a woman, a farmer, etc. in the society that I'm trying to build. I would want to put myself in all of these different instances. What will happen if I become a woman? Would I like this kind of legislation, etc.? So it pushed me to be much more empathetic. Um, rather than being stuck at an abstract level, which is what the criticism says, then I got to immerse myself. I want to not only think what I would think if I were a woman, but I would want to feel how a woman would feel with this kind of society. This is a basic call for empathy. Okay, so this is about to get done in about three to five minutes. So we're done with the, with the specific activities I use. But for assessment evaluation, okay, so... Dun sa ethics zone, for instance, may isang meeting na isang group lang yung magmamanage ng class. It's their own activities. It's their own topic of choice. But kailangan nilang i-apply lahat ng moral theories na pinagdaanan namin. Kunyari, kung, kung abortion to, uh, anong sasabihin ng, ng consequentialism? Uh, anong, anong sasabihin ni Kant? Etc. So, ganun yung ginagawa ko. Or pwedeng two groups in, in one meeting since one and a half hours siya. Okay, for my fellow one, a good chunk of which is ethics, I... The, 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 the number one output is a proposal. Okay, this proposal can be something mundane. Should we approve of this law? It can be what to do in a zombie outbreak, for instance. Should we, what to do when aliens arrive to the Philippines? Bahala sila pumili. And then they would want to justify their proposal according to the different ethical theories. Uh, how would you justify this from a utilitarian perspective, etc.? Bakit ko pinapayagan yung zombie? Speaking of zombie, well, this is not a zombie uh, thing. This is... This is, uh, this is not All of Us Are Dead. This is Sweet Home, which is another monster uh, K, K drama. But I was talking about bosses earlier. Like, is it so, is it tawag dito? Why is it relevant to talk about zombies? They're not real. But you can Google videos, YouTube videos of, of people with rabies. They look like and behave like zombie patients. Again, I want to, to, to remind how fiction stories of going to the moon were, were fiction before, but hindi na ngayon. The strength of philosophy is to prepare us for the future. Science has its own very constricting methodologies, but effective, of course, methodology sometimes. So that I do not want to return to these bosses in my class. I like the creativity, but of course, we will ground this creativity. We will try to foster this in a philosophical manner. We will be sensitive to context. There's your classic paper. Your oral exam, for me, it's open everything. Um, uh, it's open everything because I can modify my questioning. Hindi forget open everything, masasagot mo lahat and that happens. Mag-isip rin sila, especially if it's an applied question related to their proposal. The NCQ, I know, it has its gamut for me. Hindi forget MCQ, again, walang foster na critical thinking. So this is a question I made with relation to roles. This is very applied. It doesn't mean na binasa mo yung reading, masasagatan mo siya agad. And then I give an answer key with very detailed explanations with the page number from the, from the text. Also, of course, pwedeng hindi lang naman MCQ yung assessment evaluation. 
pwedeng, okay, ito yung tanong, di ba? Okay, ipa-explain sa student, bakit hindi A, bakit hindi B, bakit C yung sagot or something, bakit hindi dog? Tapos, makikita, nakikita ko rin yung, yung ano, kung paano sila mag-isip. May mag-email, sir, bakit hindi ganito yung sagot? Di ba dapat ganyan-ganyan? So, meron pa rin makikita ang critical thinking dito from MCQ. Again, this is not in isolation. Or, there is this line of thought. Di ba mas, mas pang logic lang yung MCQ? Yes, um, ginagamit talaga yung MCQ sa logic, but the readings have logic. The, the, the authors from the philosophy articles argue with logic. So some of my questions are very logical. Again, hindi forget me na sa mga reading, baka kuha mo yung tamang sagot. So the usual patterns, which of the following choices is the most relevant to the conclusion? The most irrelevant? Which of the following choices strengthens most the author's conclusion? Etc. Yung mga ganun. So hindi ibig sabihin MCQ ay walang philosophical thinking na mafo-foster in my limited experience. I have to thank the, the EDOC people for teaching me how to make multiple choice questions. And finally, delivery. Um, na, natakal na to ni Sir Totoy very well, but I just want to, yeah, I think I've also, yeah, I've, I've gone through this. I want to go to the last bullet and they don't want to be treated like they don't know nothing. Of course, these are generalizations and kung even hindi ka Gen Z, mag apply din to sa iba sa atin. Okay, like, may matututunan naman tayo sa kanila. Alam naman natin to, pero depende rin sa konteksto, no? this is more applicable for high school and college and above. I continue to be amazed by the changing views of my students on traditional issues. So, of course, hindi ibig sabihin I agree with everything. But minsan pag yung mga Facebook uh, friend ko, nakikita ko ano yung mga pinapost nila, hmm, malito ah. So, yeah, address ko yun sa class. In a way that will not embarrass them. In, and I'm telling them, oh, siguro you might have gone to this conclusion because step one, step two, step three. But actually, it should be this way, step A, B, C, because, etc. Um, so, here is so one of my last few slides. So, mas sensitive sila ngayon to certain issues, right? And we can harness that. Um, to certain, And also, they're, yes, they're more emotionally sensitive. And that can be great because, for example, you're teaching about rights. It's one thing when Kant says, don't use people merely as means and how rights are universalizable, how neo-Kantians have based uh, our rights, rights on Kant, how there are utilitarian justifications of rights. But it's another thing to, to, to make people understand how it feels to have your rights deprived from you. Maybe that is what will spark a paradigm change in someone's head. Like what it did to me. It's one thing to know cognitively, intellectually, rationally. It's another thing to know emotively. And then and, and contemporary epistemology has made us aware of the value of feelings. Uh, in P4C, I've gotten the privilege to, to work with Dr. Mendoza. Um, there are P4C scholars, um, Dr. Tess, uh, in the department. So alam na alam to ng mga tao sa, sa P4C. Iba yung what do you think sa how do you feel. At magkaiba yung value nun. But even from Plato, from Phaedrus, that's later Plato, um, has has a much more emphasis on on the role of emotions on thinking rather than Plato in the Republic, for instance. But that can be controversial. And I like connecting the personal and the social. Um, siga two minutes na lang, sorry. Like like kunyari, But this is from Plato, di ba? Yung yung Plato sa Republic nagsisinolin yung gobyerno nila. Eh. Um, is that correct? Should the government lie? If you say no, for instance. What if a media person is interviewing a, a soldier? Uh, tapos, ang tanong ay, nakita niyo na po ba yung kuta ng terrorist group na ito? Pag sinabi ng soldier na yes, nakita na, eh di pag nakikinig doon yung terrorist group, lipat sila ng hideout. Di, di walang kwenta yung surveillance na ginawa ng military, for example. So, uh, absolute ba yung value ng, ng truthfulness? But you can connect that to the personal, for example. Pag may kang dalawang friend, friend A and friend B na mag -jowa. nakita mo na si friend B cheating on friend A, would you tell friend A na nag-cheat si friend B? So there is a connection here from the personal to the social, from the microscopic level to the macroscopic level. And some students would be more concerned at their own personal level. Some would be at the social level. And we can, ganun naman yung beauty ng philosophy. Pwede kang mag ganun, ganun like connect, connect. And just a, just a few, five examples of, of design styles. Okay, just na-feel minsan ng mga estudyante kung genuine yung interest mo dun sa interest nila. Um, I happen to use examples na interesado ako. It, it happens na interesado rin sila. This is from my favorite K-pop group, TXT. So I designed a, a thought experiment to, to test them on the different classifications of utilitarianism from Derek Parfit's reason and, sorry, um, Derek Parfit's reason and priority, I think it's the title. 
No, I'm probably bungling forgetting the title. Uh, but yeah, so this is though in, in 171, not in GE. So you have your utils there, 14, 14, 20, 10, and which would be the kind of utilitarianism applicable. So this is connecting to the common references. This is from the modern classic Mean Girls. And so again, this is from, from Meta Ethics. How would you categorize that statement? And also, I spend like 20... Uh, as a film nerd, I like my hermeneutic, hermeneutical analysis of films. This is Neon Genesis Evangelion. And from this one frame, I was trying to draw an analogy between God's relationship with man uh, and also sh- the, the protagonist's relationship with his father under a Sartian lens. And yeah, this is Boja Korsman. So hindi naman lahat po ng slide ko puti lang. Uh, minsan, ganyan, may design siya na pwede natin gawin. And also, oh, minsan may theme yung slides ko. Like kung about natural moral law, I would put there things that do not seem natural just to challenge what their notion of natural is. And I like diagrams. This is from logic and also this one. Um, a diagrammatization of the justification of, of roles as social contract. And yes, and that's it. That's the methodology part. I'm sorry for taking more of the time, but thank you very much, everyone. Maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga speakers today. So later, we will have a short break of five minutes. And I remind everyone to follow. So there will be a exercise break so that pagbalik po natin, ang dami po nating nakuhang insights and um, horizons on how to teach ethics no, in our times right now. So see you later after five minutes and we can start with the open forum and all the questions that you sent. And hopefully uh, right now in the Q&A, we will all discuss them later. See you po. Maraming salamat. Simpleng ehersisyo sa palaupong pamumuhay o sedentary lifestyle. Sabi nga nila, sitting is the new smoking at ang pag-upo ng matagal ay nakakasama sa kalusugan. Sundin ang mga sumusunod. Ehersisyo sa leeg at balikat. sa kamay. sa likod at legs. Ugaliin gawin itong mga ehersisyo kada isang oras ng pagkakaupo. Ehersisyo sa leeg at balikat. Ehersisyo sa kamay. Ehersisyo sa likod at legs. Isang paalala mula sa OSHC. Alex, Alex and Totoy. Yes, 
po. Can you... You, you make me so proud. Ang ganda ng mga presentation nyo. So I think later for the Q&A, we, we have very interesting questions. No? But more than anything, you were able to show the existential aspect. Na yung practical existential aspect. Talagang going back. Philosophy as wonder. Sir Totoy. Ang daming pasasalamat sa ano. Maraming pasasalamat sa 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 chat box. No? Ang daming ang daming ganun yung mga reaction. Talagang lumalabas na good life. Nakalagay. Thank you very much. Oh. Sabihin ko ito mamaya. Ah. Thank you very much. No. Yung una lang, kasi yung, yung panibaking sa, sa, sa new, the new questions, no? Ma'am? Ma'am? Ma'am Nax? Yes po, Ma'am Nax? shout out ko lang na talagang lahat nakinig at uh, were enthralled. We're, they were really engaged in your discussions. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Honor and excellence. Salamat. Okay, ang dami. Ang dami pa sa salamat. Welcome back sa ating lahat. I would just like to say at this juncture of this webinar that my younger colleagues in the Department of Philosophy has really had made me proud. It's making me proud as I talk right now. No? So as we start the open forum, no? the question and answers, the question and answer section of our webinar, no? then you can now see we are now we will also do the Socratic method no? in trying again to see the, the breadth, the depth no? of how it is to teach ethics because we are actually trying to understand no? the, the, the wonderful thing of being a human being, no? the, the, the good life, no? the happy life that we are called to, especially to in everyday life. No? Kasi yun ang aming, yun ang aming mandate sa... UP, sa UP system. No? It's ethics one is 
ethics in ordinary life. Precisely, it's it's very practical. But for but for the purposes of our of our in, in academic disciplines, of course, you have to go into the theoretical aspect. No? So right now, no, we will I will start not the ball rolling in relation to the question and answer method. No? So I'd like to start the question and answer by underscoring the fact that Aristotle start, says no, that philosophizing starts with wonder. And all, all the participants no, of our webinar, no, they have this, um, this um, issue in relation to precisely they want to be better professors, no, teachers no, to guide no, our younger our younger, uh, precisely our students, no, to understand what it means to be an ethical being, no, a moral being, no, and especially in UP, we are all called to live, to live practically, the honor and excellence lemma of our university, and it it, it very much goes into what is ethics, no. So, so sabihin ko lang po ito, ang unang tanong po natin na pwede natin mong pag-usapan, no, among our among us, no. So, kanina doon sa Q&A of today, pinagtanong, what what are your attitudes towards primary sources, no, the classics, no? Kasi nga ito napakahalaga kasi lumalabas nga in relation to the to the presentation of Professor Mendoza and of Professor Lopez, no. Talagang doon doon naglalaro eh, no? With the content, with the rich content of human experience, precisely we have to go back to history, no? precisely ethical thinking, ethical practice is not a practice from nowhere or from the view of no, nowhere. No, yung that that famous uh, metaphysics book. No, you really have to take into account the context and who and what we are. So I'd like to start with Professor Mendoza in relation to what is your attitude, no? in relation to using the primary sources and how do you actually handle that no in your ethics one uh subject and also maybe the higher philosophy subjects even in the graduate level uh ma'am pwede po ba mag-share screen uli kasi kapakit may question din po dun sa mga sample outputs uh i think uh i give uh so Kendrick maybe our co-moderator can uh, can help us uh, may gusto kang i-share uh, may gusto i-share si Professor Mendoza Ah, ito po, ito po. Uh, so, yung sa presentation ko po kasi, uh, na, napakita ko lang yung, yung YouTube video. Pero kasi po para sa akin, talagang yung pagtuturo po ng ethics ngayong pandemya, overwhelming eh. Dahil nagkakasakit po tayo, tapos stress po lahat. Uh, hindi ko po sinasabi na wag nang panoorin yung, wag nang basahin yung mga... Main, main references. Mahalaga po yun talaga. Pero ang, ang feeling ko po, be mindful of our audience and, and our students. Uh, the first thing we should do is parang pakiramdaman natin kung anong sitwasyon nila. Tapos give them, give them the, give, kasi po yung output ko talagang they, although I start with, with YouTube videos, I also give them the main references and uh, they research about it to the extent na nakakagawa sila ng ng nag na they they're able to read somehow ako po sa Nico Makian eh uh, kay Aristotle Nico Makian ethics lang yung na-master ko eh. and then this this student uh, papakita ko po yung uh, kita po ba mm-hmm. you know uh, yes. very extensive uh, yung paper niya from, from a YouTube video uh, nakagawa siya so he started with uh, tweets from uh, UP being concerned about its world ranking, pero natututo nga ba? Tapos, then he went to Aristotle, Nicomachean Ethics and Politics. No? Na, nasa references po ito. <laughs> Tapos, meron pa nga kay ano. Pero ang point ko po kasi dito, sa... I think the slide po, nasa first slide pa rin po yung presentation. Ay, sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you for your... Uh, ito po. Yes po. Yan. So ito po yung sample output ng isang uh, student na na-inspire ng video. Para po sa akin, yung mga video, they're meant to inspire and provoke students. 
to to, uh, to it's they're meant to engage them kasi ano na po eh, depressed na po sila eh. At pagod na eh. eh kung ang gagawin po nilang pananaliksik ay eh, bahagi rin ng kanilang buhay ngayong pandemya, saka po mas magiging makabuluhan. At para po sa yung, yung pag-aaral at paggawa nila ng research paper, natutunan ko po ito sa mga kaibigan, I think sa Filipino department eh, that uh, we should take part, we should take an active part in knowledge creation. And for us to do that, we should be sensitive to the language of our mind. <laughs> the, the, parang nga sa akin, hindi purong Pilipino ito, yung Taglish. Eh. Uh, pero, pero still, so ito po, oh, napakaganda po. It was even considered for a journal. Uh, kasi po, uh, uh, yung, yung, uh, para sa akin din po, talagang yung information overload, uh, pa, how do we deal with that? And how do we how do we get students to filter what is relevant for them to pursue an argument or a topic really well and at the same time uh, overcome their preconceptions and confirmation bias uh, pa- pasensya na po ako po ay uh, yun uh, medyo lumaki rin po ako sa seminaryo tapos nagturo rin po ako sa seminaryo alam ko po yung emphasis sa objectivity Pero nung nag-aral po kay Wittgenstein na may Kantian aspect din, no? Immanuel Kant is known for for the categorical imperative. Baka hindi naman po magkatunggali yung context sensitivity. <laughs> uh, hindi po siya kala- yung pagiging insensitive natin sa situation, sa, ka- sa pangailangan ng sitwasyon. Hindi po siya hiwalay sa uh, interest at rigor ng scholarship na pwedeng mabuo. Uh, so, sorry, pasensya na po kung hindi naging ganun kalinaw ito. Kasi nga po, uh, mindful po ako. Kasi ano to eh, online eh. Uh, uh, I, I think sometimes, um, I think of my students, uh, parang yung, pag nagtuturo tayo, yung, inf- yung knowledge or information or insights, parang water, tapos yung mind nila cup. Pag ang dami nating sinasabi, ano, matatapon na lang yung tubig eh. <laughs> so, I think part of teaching is stopping and listening. <laughs> And then how do how do you make the cup bigger? Uh, you make the cup bigger by 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 asking what they're interested in, no? Kasi uh, natutuwa nga po ako kasi sila na yung nagre-research. Sir, ito po oh, re- recent article on New York Times, no? Galing, no? Ay, sir, mababaw to. Uh, pagtiwa uh, kasi po ang Gen Z tech savvy. Mas alam nila yung mga books na halimbawa yung mga sorry to say mga Kasi po third world tayo eh. May mga books na nasa pirate uh, parang mga illegal websites lang na makukuha. And I, I think I have to be honest about it kasi I came from Norway who's, uh, where we value open source materials. Pagbalik ko dito sa Pilipinas, ang hirap. No? Uh, so, so yun lamang po. I think uh, starting with... Tap, saka nag-evolve na po yung YouTube videos. Tignan niyo po yung mga scholar sa UC Berkeley, si Hans Luga. They give lectures uh, on Wittgenstein. So, paki-update din lang po yung mga pinapanood nating videos. I think it's not about the 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 technology per se, but the content, no? So, so so yun lang po. Sir Alex, you're actually very clear about your attitude in relation to uh primacy primary sources, but I think would you like to uh, add no other other ideas and your position about it in relation to the use of primary sources, which is key in the philosophical ethical development no in the studies of our students. Thank you po. Ang ganda po nung sinabi both ni Dr. Ocampo on the importance of primary sources and yung consideration of Dr. Mendoza on on compassion in our current context. And really, the challenge for me in in my limited experience of teaching is a compromise of both. Um, Pati po yung mga teacher ay, na, na mas bata sa akin, we will lament like nung estudyante tayo, bago tayo maging teacher, ito yung number of pages na binabasa natin, ito yung libro na binabasa natin. And then from the first sem of the pandemic up to now, I think the fourth or fifth sem of the pandemic, how much have we watered down our sources? I just had an orientation yesterday and, and two days ago with my students, sabi ko sa kanila, Okay, at the, at the latter half of this sem, meron ako dyang readings na 20 plus pages. That is a normal amount of page numbers from Tilo. Deal with it. Okay. The, um, hin- 
your students you have to read okay so like um nandoon yung challenge but at the same time i compromise then kasi mahalaga yung sinabi ni Sir Mendoza so primary siya pero pwedeng mas maikli for example yung uh, yung selection and also uh, natutuwa ako dun sa sinabi ni Sir Mendoza about the quality of online sources for example in certain online encyclopedias meron yan yung mga authors nagpa-publish sila sa Oxford sa Cambridge so Uh, yung yun nga yung yung continual re-education din natin as teachers kailangan din ma-evaluate natin yung quality of of secondary sources there are those that are famous but really really bad but but though but there are those that na high qualities tulad ng sinabi ni Dr. Mendoza and and ayun po kasama po dun sa kay, nagpapasalamat ako sa UP dahil meron silang mga webinar for example on how to on how to distinguish these sources so yun po yung tam- mahirap sabihin madaling sabihin tamang compromise pero ang hirap nung eksaktong timpla na primary pa rin pero pwedeng mas maikli tapos magandang stimuli yung online for example so pwedeng marriage nung dalawa yun po Ma'am Lisa pwede like to ah sorry pwede mag- yes pwede professor Mendoza pwede po yung Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy uh, there uh, It's not the groundwork of metaphysics of morals, pero they're written by by commentators from uh, from Stanford. Uh, uh, even even Kant is read better read in English. And 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 yung nga po kaya binabanggit ko ang challenge po sa atin bilang guro uh, maging translator tayo. Eh. Let's try to overcome the jargon uh, so that we can connect with the with our audience. Kasi feeling ko po ang kaya merong anti-intellectualism <laughs> sa, sa Pilipinas kasi we're not able to connect with our fellows. Uh, so 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 yun lang po. So I don't I'm not against jargons. <laughs> If you read my dissertation it's published in Norway. It's a, it's exegesis in, in German and 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 uh, from but magagamit ba yon? I think it's trash when I when I talk to my students. But Uh, I transform them no ano ano ba yung ano ba yung katanggap-tanggap po dito so uh, <laughs> naalala ko sabi ni Wittgenstein and philosophy no I think he's talking about a uh, philosophy that is uh, parang not based based in everyday life <laughs> parang <ganun. laughs> so yun po in relation to the primary sources because we really have to go back to the reality that philosophy or any and in discipline is it's a living it's a living community of scholars so precisely what alex mentioned earlier that it is really a marriage uh, between the primary sources and the online resources that we now have no uh, really magically i mean it's really quite amazing no but then we have to go back to the fact that reading is fundamental in in the academic life in the, in the life of the mind no And since ethics, we are, and we are dealing with young people, no? uh, people with their life ahead of them, okay? so it would really be good no? to give them, precisely the professors will be the one to curate because we cannot, we cannot read everything. No? You, you, you cannot be a, a Greek speaker or a Latin speaker or a French speaker, but then it is to give our students the best translations okay? of the primary sources no and to really give them that that moment because somehow when you read you are more contemplative eh. no mas mas nakaka-reflect eh, no talaga sino nga sino nga ba ako no saan saan nga ba ako papunta no in in relation to that no so talagang so each call ito ng each professor no ng each teacher no so, ang dami nating ang daming nakalag in ngayon no na talagang nasa kamay natin no kung paano natin gagabayan no ang ating mga estudyante no? para makuha din talaga nila yung habit of reading because it's inevitable because even on the online source they have to read no but precisely we we guide them no? how to connect the dots then hopefully they will be more enlightened no after after the semester with us no and it it has made a mark in their life no in their intellectual formation no So isa pang lumabas na na katanungan no sa Q&A no, tungkol sa fake news. Yeah, because con- again context, no. It's it's 2022, okay? And precisely our role as professors, no, as teachers of ethics, no, is to help our students have that critical, no, mindset in relation to understanding, no, 
what is fake news that somehow will will um, um, either intensify their biases and their prejudices in relation to things. So, kasi lumalabas nga ethical ethical discipline is it's it's a rational context. Eh. Huh? Ang ginagamit natin dito rationality. Yung sinabi nga kanina ni ni Alex na yung yung the the, the logic of it. Huh? coming from different theories no ano pang gagamitin mo para nga makapag-usap tayo no? na ano ba nga yung tamang paggamit ko ng aking kalayaan kasi it will, will will boil down to that no or or will this particular ethical theory lead me to a happy life to a good life no? or taking into account the common good no so Professor Mendoza, ano anong pwede nating maibahagi sa ating mga colleagues no sa buong bansa no kung paano naman to no? paano natin tutulungan no knowing knowing na fake news really um, can manipulate no the, the tender minds of our students no in that sense they're more, they are more vulnerable okay Para nga hindi nga sila ma- 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 manipulate no ng mga interest groups na to no nanjan lang no even even in the academic realm. Nakita po ba ma'am yung share slide ko kanina? Oh nak- nakita Professor Mendoza. Yes to to yan. Yan, yan na po. Uh, 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 fake disinformation related po sa fake news. So sabi po sinulat po ng student no uh, as a mass communication student who is aware of the ubiquity of media and how it causes more causes people to subconsciously accept information from media i became engrossed with identifying the underlying ethical issue on data privacy that social media poses concerning the incoming 2022 philippine elections my passion and, and interest for this topic were further strengthened because of a netflix documentary i have watched entitled social dilemma which identify social media as relevant factor in the increase in political polarization in the United States. More interestingly, I encountered an article that supports the idea that social media can drive an increase in polarization through echo chambers, which in essence filters and limits what we see online only to what is relevant to us. This said, it became very interesting to uncover how our data in social media is used to influence the political choices we make and whether or not this affects our freedom as voters. Furthermore, considering the Philippine elections, it, is, it also felt very motivating to pursue our paper since our discussion may be relevant to self-evaluation knowing the influence of social media on individuals' political choices. From the information of my group groupmates and uh, what I have gathered in the topic, I learned that the use of our data in social media to manipulate our choices is ultimately an issue of freedom and determinism. Masyado na pong mahaba yung ano, pero excerpt lang to. Ang galing nung pag, merong na, yung susunod na part ng essay ng student doon, pinapaliwanag niya na Inevitable na yung social media sa technology pero there can be a way which we can be free through certain theories. No? Uh, so, uh, meron pa digital detox or lo- looking at other groups or sites, mga ganun. So, uh, bina- pasensya na po uh, kasi I feel I'm also enriched by my students. So, napakaganda po nung, nung sinulat na yun. Uh, uh, siguro, perhaps we can discuss about echo chambers or Siguro, uh, maybe we can refuse using verbal abuse. <laughs> so, yun, yun pong mga... And, and sometimes, uh, mahirap po kasi, tal, may bigla kayo mag-uusap. Uh, ang sasabihin ni Kant dyan, uh, respect for persons, no? uh, minsan okay naman po yun, kaya lang, ano, uh, pwede namang sabihin na paano ba tayo magkakaroon ng magkakaunawaan kahit magkaiba tayo ng paniniwala. Uh, how can we go about so so yun po pwede po siya mag-evolve in that way so so yun lang po muna sir Alex ikaw naman thank you po sir Toto ang ganda ng tanong at challenging napaka-challenging din niya um i w- i would take as my jumping off point yung sinabi ni sir Toto about a certain normative theory 
I can take this this question and and start from this and launch how certain normative theories and and meta ethical theories can answer this just off the top of my head. For example, usually yung yung ganito na lang, okay, meron akong bias and but this is my bias. Like um uh, you should respect my bias. We're in a democracy. But for example, I can go back to to liberal thinking because I discuss journals for example. But freedom of expression is not absolute, for instance. Even the granddaddy of liberal philosophy, John Stuart Mill, said that explicitly said that there are limits to freedom of expression. For example, his harm principle. If your free speech will, will promote harm, for instance, then in society, that free speech not just can, but even must be curtailed. Okay, so for example, if those biases are prom- promoting certain harms, even in a democratic society, that should be stopped. Freedom of expression is freedom is never absolute. For instance, there are very different conceptions of freedom, uh, even from, from medieval philosophy, for example, that can enrich the discussion. But but one last thing I want to say is also going back at a meta-ethical level, naman, yung yung nuances ng, ng relativism, for example. Um, not just if if you want me to respect you. But bakit ikaw lang? Di ako din dapat respetuhin mo. So respect goes both way. But but not just for that. But but also uh, because uh, tawag dito, lahat tayo may biases nga, but the challenge is how to live with those biases. And and we have to examine the specific content of what those biases are. It can't be in vogue always. I can say to my students for example, na gusto ko to, dapat ko siyang gawin. That the consequentialist theories will have certain things to say about this, etc. So really, we can take this question as a starting point for as a stimulus, a good stimulus for several of our normative and, and meta-ethical theories, uh, especially with the by inserting the Filipino dimension to this. Sabi ni Sartotoy kanina, we can argue with each other intellectually uh, in a civil way. Kasi sa Pilip- di ba yung sensitive, hindi lang yun yung Gen Z. Filipino as a whole, in general, yes. mas sensitive sa West, kaysa sa West. Like people who have worked abroad, for instance, will say that how Western people can separate more easily professional from personal. But we were not that way so much with the Philippines. And, but, but we do have to learn how to disagree respectfully and without resorting to violence and name-calling, for instance. But of course, that's very hard to achieve. And I sympathize with all educators. So let, let us move on to another question in the chat. This is from the chat box. Ang tanong po ng ating, isa nating colleague, no? Um, can there be universal ethical principles regardless of our religion, morality, philosophy to guide every human being as he or she exercises his or her autonomy? Ito, ito nga, no? Sir Mendoza. Siguro, siguro po rather than... Uh, I don't mind talking about universal principles. Uh, ang... ang Alam mo to Ma'am Lisa, ang ang more concern ko ngayon consistency tapos how it was uh, developed from by, by Wittgenstein no. Pero uh, rad just to be layman about it, let, perhaps what we can talk about is a bigger picture no. Uh, tapos huhugot na lang din po ako ulit dun sa uh, sa isang <laughs> sharing uli ng aking estudyante. Uh, tignan niyo po ah uh, uh, if there's one most valuable lesson I uh, nak- nakikita po ba? Yes. Uh, yes, most totoy. Most valuable lesson that I uh, picked from the writing of our paper, uh, it would be acknowledging the importance of discoursing with other people. Through discourse, pe- people can contribute different ideas. Sometimes those ideas, different ideas may clash with one another. But fortunately, in our group, we are open to listening. So open to openness po to listening to each other. I think that's that may be a universal value that we should share, no? Open, uh, openness to listening to each other's insights and explaining our inside sides in a composed manner. This is one thing I have, uh, appreciate about our group. We treat each other equally even though one of our group members is intellectually advanced, no? Kasi a uh, BA student daw po siya. He asks for our thoughts and opinions we listen to his thoughts and ideas as well, and we cl- we clarify. No, uh, dito po yung mas mahalaga yung second group, a uh, second pa- uh, paragraph. Going back to the importance of discourse, our exchange of 
thoughts and ideas made me realize it is not enough to rely on one's own observations and perceptions. You need to be open to others' thoughts and ideas to understand the bigger picture. Ito na po yung binabang, pinaguhugutan ko ng uh, bigger picture which may be connected to universal standards. No? Kasi baka po yung pinapalagay nating universal standards eh hindi naman talaga bigger picture. Ang metaphor ko po dyan, yung ano eh, yung yung kwento ng Seven Blind Man, uh, uh, Blind Man and the Elephant, na iba't iba po yung nahawakan nilang parte ng elephant, pero inaaway nila yung 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 ka- ka- kausap nila. Palagay ko po bilang mga tao lamang tayo at may limitasyon ng pag-iisip at kakayahan na na makaunawa at makadigest ng information, yung kung meron pong universal value Uh, yung openness to listening to each other's thoughts and explaining ourselves in a composed manner. No? Na yung hindi po tayo nagbumurahan. At uh, in all patients, we understand, try to understand where others are coming from. And mind you po, I don't think this op- listening to each other is uh, independent of making compromises and uh, cooperating with, with each other. No? Uh, so, so, so yun lang, yun lang po muna. Alex? Yes po. Okay, napak- I mean, that question is like the history of ethics. So that's uh, what a hard, amazing question. Um, just a very short disclaimer. Um, I, nasabi kanina ko niya rin ni Sir Toto yung, yung pag-foster ng independent thinking at yung self-correction. Napaka, I agree with that tremendously. Um, which is why, when I, pero hindi rin nga natin may iwasan yung, yung sariling biases natin. So for example, I would tell my students, okay, my bias is blank. But I'm not telling you that so that you will believe my bias. I'm telling you that so you can protect yourself from my bias. Kasi baka, may, syempre, kung may bias ako, may blind spot na ako. So, so nasasabi ko sa kanila yung bias ko. But at the same time, I'm careful as much as possible. As a philosopher, as a researcher, ito yung strengths and weaknesses ng bias ko. Ito yung sabi ng literature against my bias. Ito yung sabi ng literature in support of my bias. Okay, so my bias is I'm not a relativist. I'm not a subjectivist. I believe in some kind of, of universal principle. Pero hindi pa ako settled which um, parang for me, nag, naglalaban-laban yung ibang meta-ethical, uh, sorry, normative theories when it comes to particular cases. So napaka-importante ng konteksto. So pwedeng, pwedeng relativist ka or subjectivist ka kung maingay ba yung pag paghigup mo ng sabaw ng pansit kung nasa Japan ka o nasa Pilipinas. Pero paano kung to-torturein ka na? I respect your belief. But your belief, you want to torture me. So ano yung moral standing ko kung pati yun relativist? So I tell my students, there should be a limit to this subjectivism and this cultural relativism. Because I don't want you to torture me. I don't get any pleasure from that. So I need to have a moral standing and a justification of why I need to stop you. At babalik ka dun sa sinabi ni Sir Totoy na how do we justify those differences in and babalik ang sinabi ni Mamo Campo in a rational way so that we can each o- understand each other because we have different beliefs. But even if we have different beliefs, there has to be certain things that we must agree upon, like no genocide, like there has to be human rights, etc. Ito ko lang susugan yung mga nasabi yung dalawa. Kasi when, I, when we talk about prejudices and biases intellectually, no? or where I tell my students, this is where I'm coming from. This is my training. Ito, dapat masabi natin sa kanila, ito yung training natin. Eh. Ano, yung, ano, yung, ano yung pinakasabihin nating intellectual tradition sa UP Diliman, Philosophy Department? Huh? Para alam nila yung strong methodological na content no ng ating mga tinuturo no lalo na nga sa pagtuturo nga ng ethics kasi nga pinapakita natin somehow no in a more in a three dimensional way no the the different the wonderful ways of being human pero nga being human what for the good no somehow for the happy life no or somehow for the for the rational life kaya nga, marami tayong matututunan sa isa't isa no in relation to to our intellectual biases and prejudices. May isa pang tanong dito. Actually ga- ga- galing na to dati pa no D- during the re- uh, the registration no of for the webinar of the day no. Ang isang tanong nila, do I need to have a philosophy degree to teach ethics? 
what do you think are the necessary qualifications to become an ethics teacher? No? Since we are all from the philosophy department, maybe we can we can give our two cents worth of our thoughts about it. Sir Totoy. Ganda ng tanong mo, ma'am. Pwede ba magbiro? Sige, uh... <laughs> basta alam nila nagbibiro tayo. Hindi. <laughs> Ang situation ko, magkaanak muna sila. No? Uh, tapos magkausapin nila yung anak nila ng philosophy. Uh, hindi, ibig ko sabihin kasi, uh, I think uh, part of being a philosopher is trying to understand uh, others with different minds. No? Uh, uh, being, having a philosophy degree uh, gives you an edge in the sense. Master mo yung literature. Kaya mo nga natatranslate. Eh. Kaya mo nga... Uh, pero feeling ko kung at least kung uh, kuha ka ng konting mga crash courses kasi ang ang comment ko po dun sa mga ibang nakapag based from my philo students ang naging karanasan nila ng ethics medyo bukish eh ano yung sinabi ni Kant ano yung sinabi ni ni Mill ano yung pero wala yung ano yung implication nito ano yung weakness nito Uh, uh, so ano ba yung origin nito wala uh, so uh, feeling ko po mas makukuha mo yung parang yung philosophy as an art kapag kumuha ka ng ilang courses so i really suggest that that you you take it uh, so so yun lang po Sir Alex ito na po yung huling question natin no before we wrap up the Or, I mean, lahat ng ma- lahat ng magagandang bagay ay may, katas- may katapusan, no? Kaya, But, um, in that sense, very teleological talaga. Teleological lang ating setup. Ma'am, 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 may comment doon. Socrates didn't have a philosophy degree but he was teaching ethics until his death. Tama po yun, pero we can say that to- Socrates might be the exception. Ilan po ba yung Socrates? <laughs> Sa, ano, ano? Uh, yun, hindi ko po nila lahat. Uh, meron po ako, I think there uh, to be honest there I'm in the College of Science right now teaching STS uh, that's where I got the interdisciplinary in the interdisciplinary approach to ethics uh, some of their PhD professors are, are are more philosophically astute in some fields <laughs> dahil sa dahil sa research po nila tapos kasi, kasi when you go deep in your profession you go in in, in your discipline you You question the foundations of your knowledge, and you go to questions of philosophy and ethics. No, uh, so so uh, tama po kayo. Pero uh, Socrates would be uh, very rare. <laughs> Alex. Yes po. Ang ang sagot ko po dun ay hindi kailangan kasi po, for example, sa UP system nga po, uh, the Ethics One syllabus is designed to be taught by by not just the philosophy department, but also as someone who has had the privilege to get two undergraduate degrees, one from the sciences and one from philosophy. Like, a lot of different people can teach this. You don't need a degree also in the sense, and daming, I was just once a philosophy nerd who doesn't have a degree and and the department accepted me and gave me all of these opportunities when I was 26 years old. And there are people still like me out there who don't have the privilege to go back to school. Uh, so, Minsan mas malamang pa silang alam kasi sa akin kasi basa sila ng basa. Um, basa lang ng basa. And this is one of the advantages yung mga sinabing sources kanyo ni Sir Mendoza. Online, wink, wink. I hope you know them. Because you can you can, you can can enter, tawag dito, di ba? the publishing houses may search bar ng latest publications. You can enter there a field kasi lalabas yung recent literature. This is what I do actually before preparing a new syllabus, for instance, or when, I, when I'm updating. So hindi naman po na... Yung, yung maganda yung may degree pero hindi po siya um, uh, tawag dito. Yung iba yung necessary sa sufficient condition if we go back to logic po. And also sa pagbabasa and across different disciplines, uh, ma-encounter natin yung different context which is uh, just, I'm just gonna answer for one minute yung isa kong nakita sa chat kanina. Speaking of different context, enough ba for example yung yung rational discourse sa certain issues na binanggit niya. Kaya dun yung context, so parang yung I was talking about relativism kanina What if may gustong tumorture sir or gustong pumatay sir actually talk about this in class? Like, kasalanan pa bang patayin siya? For instance, what do the Catholic philosophers say about that? Yung new ones ng do not kill. 
So importante talaga yung context dito. And through reading, not just in philosophy, but in psychology, in anthropology, in sociology, for instance, um, we can encounter all these applied concepts without forgetting going back to the theory. You can't apply anything without studying theory. Yun po. Maraming salamat no sa sa inyong dalawa no sa ating sa ating mga participants no from from the whole of the Philippines no I'm I'm happy to say that no to say that here in this particular webinar no um um last comment yes. gusto ko lang sabihin na uh, Sir Alex I love that you disagreed with me uh, I changed my mind now and I think what's more important is that uh, that ethics teachers are willing to learn just like Socrates did no They're willing to accept their ignorance and they're willing to learn from others. So, salamat. Thank you for letting me learn from you. Hindi po ako nag-disagree sa inyo. Baka maging k-drama tayo dito. Okay, okay lang, okay lang. We can entertain more questions po. May time po po tayo. Ako, sige, okay. Pwede pa? Pwede pang isang question? Yes, ma'am. May time pa po. Okay na yun, digital detox na. <laughs> ito na, ito na. Ah, ito may, may, may the, one of the last, no? Um, ito practical question and then very much, very much uh, relevant, no? Uh, this particular point in time, no? In this, election, in this election period, how should ethics be taught to the students? Very, very, very timely. This is a very timely question, very practical, no? Ako, ako lang masis, ma, ang masasabi ko lang, no? I can start, no? What what we can give them are guidelines. No? It's really guidelines, no? It's kasi teaching ethics, no? You are ethics is not a yung expert, no? That we are expert livers of the good life. Then we we mention it to the students. Eh? Hindi hindi ganon yun eh. Kaya we will try to help them, no? What are the conventionalities, no? The contingencies, okay? of time frames in relation to really the more fundamental things in life. Okay? So sa election ngayon, kaya nga, ano ba yung gusto mong magpat... Sino yung gusto mong magpatakbo? Huh? Sa at, anong klaseng tao? Ito na, papasok na. Anong klaseng tao ang gusto nating magpatakbo no? sa, ating, sa ating bansa? Huh? Ito yun eh. No? Anong gusto nating... Anong gusto nating klaseng tao maging tayo? Each one of us. No? Yung mga nagtuturo sa'yo. No? So... Uh, Sir Mendoza, anong masasabi mo din paano natin no? Paano natin matutulungan ang ating mga estudyante no sa panahon ng election ngayon na uh, really to, to to guide them no guidelines no guidelines no to to come up with principles on how to elect because this is very it's it's a uh, it will really have a practical it, it has really practical consequences. Okay, yung the election it has practical consequences no. The next leader, I mean the next leaders will be in power for the next six years, and they will practically um, affect our lives huh? individually. Ang ganda ng sinabi niyo, ma'am, eh, kasi minsan all we can give is guidelines and in the end, they will really have to judge. Pero nag-iisip pa rin ako, meron bang, pwede ba mangyari na mali yung application ng guidelines nila? And perhaps we can be more concrete by looking at the examples. Halimbawa, ano, baka pwedeng don't na yung guideline yung at least yung mga hindi lumalabag sa batas yung nagbabayad ng taxes mga ganun no pero yeah. tama ka uh, is, oh, is this the kind of person that I would la- want to emulate is he give uh, is he or she giving the right examples no uh, bawal kasi tayo mga kampanya ma'am eh kasi mga government pa na tayo so oh, tama yun uh, yun tama yun, tama yun. So, pero perhaps we can make the those guidelines more concrete by giving examples kasi yun nga po uh, baka masyadong broad yung guideline so yun Sir Alex gusto ko lang po i-clarify na actually I was supporting Sir Toto's answer dun sa exception kanina so hindi po ako nagdi-disagree sa kanya but also <laughs> Um, iba pa rin syempre yung degree. Kaya po ako specifically nag-degree sa philosophy kahit ano po, 10 years na po ako nagbabasa ng philosophy bago po pumasok ng department kung 26 years old ako. Andito pa yung dati kong profs. Hi, sa UP Manila. Minsan may exam ako sa med pero philosophy text ko yung binaba. Naka, ano po yun, na, 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 inaalikabok yung mga libro sa 
med library ng field. Ako yung nagbabasa nun. Pero to, uh, babalik po ako dun sa sinabi ni Ma'am Ocampo na, na guideline. At yung sinabi niya kanina, we can't give everything to our students. Kaya babalik din ako, sinabi ni Sir Toto, yung autocorrection tsaka yung independent thinking. Ito yung beauty ng theoretical tsaka nung applied uh, sciences. Well, the applied gives us all the context. You cannot read all of these contexts. So you go back to the theory and how we can supply the tools, keyword tools, for the students to make their own guidelines, but not just any guidelines that they like, how they justify these guidelines to themselves and to others in a very key, keyword contextual way. So yun po. Maraming salamat sa inyong mga sagot, no? So sana man na naliwanagan no ang mga ang ating mga co-teachers no sa sa buong Pilipinas no. Tapos ngayon gusto kong bigyan ng pagkakataon i-plug no ni Professor Mendoza yung Philosophy for Children na yung yung yung, yung P4C na ginagawa natin from the Department of Philosophy. It kasi nga it's 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 really it's really key no. It's it's key in the in the ethical development no of our students. Try, try, trying to to live what to live really what honor and excellence no in our academic endeavors so sorry ma'am medyo na pressure po ako kasi tinatapos na po namin yung project pero uh, after we were able meron rin po kasi bahagi ng project that consists in documentation pero after we're done with that we're planning to perhaps uh, begin a uh, partner with other universities Uh, uh, siguro po baka pwede hong mag-organize kami ng gantong maraming mga training or talks. Baka we can go to assessment po, yung mga essays. Uh, we can go more in-depth in that. Saka uh, ano po eh, ma- ma- uh, sa Department of Philosophy, meron po kaming pool of scholars talaga who studied under the stu- student of Dewey, yung si Matthew Lipman. May mga experts po kami sa philosophy of education. And of course, uh, open, open din po kami sa aming confirmation bias. So we engage other uh, colleges and departments na matuto rin po kami sa kanila. Siguro po, uh, I will post uh, uh, the call for partnership po sa website namin. So, salamat po, Ma'am Lisa. Ma'am Lisa is, by the way, part of the pioneers of pioneer of the Philosophy for Children. So, salamat po sa inyo. Natuto po kami sa inyo, Ma'am Lisa. Kaya kami ganito. <laughs> Talaga maraming salamat kila Dr. Lee, yung ating ating mentor, no? Okay. So, to wrap up, no, our, I just want to give a, a brief, no, a very short synthesis of what has transpired, no, in this, this morning, no? Talagang, ang dami po nating natutunan, no? Sa, sa sharing mo natin, no? opening up our life of the mind and how 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 do we see no our teaching of philosophy so we know we, we know right now that ethical truths no ethical principles are not just big questions no out there in period no? hindi kasi sila we are not we are not satisfied with abstractions no uh, we are we are involved in what is real no? so this morning no Uh, hopefully we were able to help our colleagues no from all over the philippines no um to confront no these fundamental existential issues matters in our teaching no teaching ethics no and also to help no our younger generation no to confront it with what with wonder with purpose no with wisdom kasi we are from the philosophy department no and hopefully no in our concern about the content the delivery no uh the new resources that are emerging right now and maybe five years ten years from now new resources no new methodologies will come up no uh may we be really intellectually agile no open no to use this no to listen no to understand no what is happening no uh, kasi napakaganda nangyari itong umaga na to, yung discussion ni professor mendoza yung yung discussion ni Professor Lopez. No? This is what, this is a self-reflection, self-understanding. Bakit natin ginagawa ito? No? Bilang mga guro ng etika. No? So hopefully this morning, what we were able to see that all human life, no? especially the young lives entrusted to us, no? they're valuable, unique, no? and deeply irreplaceable. No? And it is really from the study of ethics no? that somehow we gain more wisdom no? or No, and respect in relation to what we call the human person 
and acting out this life. Thank you very much. No, now the the next part of our program, matatapos na nga po tayo, will be the giving out of the certificates. Bago po yung closing remarks ni Dr. Nancy Kimuel Gabriel, who is the head of the General Education Center. Ma'am Nax? Ayan, okay po. <laughs> Maraming salamat at uh, napakaganda ng talakayan natin ngayong umaga. Sa pagkakataong ito ay uh, nadako muna po tayo sa pagbibigay ng yan, Certificate of Appreciation mula sa General Education Center, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, UP Diliman, and Commission on Higher Education. Award this Certificate of appreciation to uh, professor, Associate Professor Lumberto G. Mendoza for sharing his expertise as a source speaker in the Teach Talk, How to Teach and Manage Your Gen Z Class Ethics Edition under Linangan, the GE Faculty Development Extension Program held on the 18th day of February 2022 via Zoom. YouTube, and Facebook, signed by yours truly as the director of the GE Center and by uh, Professor Maria Teresa T. Payongayong, our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Thank you very much, Dr. Mendoza. At sa uulitin po. Picture po, sir, with your certificate. Salamat din po. Kuhanan lang po namin kayo. Okay na po. <laughs> Opo. Salamat din po sa lahat sa kasa mga nagtanong. At... Ngayon naman ay uh, pagkakaloob natin ang Certificate of Appreciation kay Mr. Alexander Atrio L. Lopez. Now, isa po siyang instructor sa philosophy department namin for sharing his expertise as resource speaker in... Uh, Teach Talk, How to Teach and Manage Your Gen Z Class Ethics Edition under Linangan GE Faculty Development Extension Program. Thank you very much. Pakita natin sa video si Sir Alex. Yan. <laughs> Sir, kuhanan muna namin po kayo sa tabi ng inyong certificate. Okay. Salamat, Sir, sa napaka makabuluhan at creative na presentation niya for today. Thank you po. Learn so much. At ngayon naman po, ipagkakalob natin ang certifico kay uh, Dr. Maria Lisa Ruth A. Ocampo. Siya po ang moderator natin sa umagang ito. Uh, ethics Edition ng linangan the GE Faculty Development Extension Program. Okay, pakita natin ulit si Ma'am Lisa para makuha na natin siya ng larawan. Smile, Ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma'am. Salamat po. Okay. Yun lang? Ah, sige. Ma'am, yung closing, yung closing Opo. remarks po nila. Maraming maraming, unang-unang napakamaraming salamat sa ating philosophy department sa pagpapaunlak sa atin na mabuo at maihatid sa kagroan ng buong Pilipinas na nagtuturo ng GE subject na Ethics 1. Ano, kay Ma'am Lisa, ang chair din ng philosophy department, at sa ating mga tagapagsalita, si na Dr. Totoy Mendoza at si Sir Alex uh, Lopez. No? Ang dami ko, personally, ang dami ko pong natutunan ang, at kung ibibase po ninyo, ang, uh, kung titingnan po ninyo ang feedback sa chat box, kung tuwa sa inyo ang mga kalahok ngayong umaga, napaka-thankful nila, appreciative at uh, very supportive sila sa mga ganitong uh, pagtitipon. 
along the way, hindi ko maiwasang maisip. No? Kasi ako nanggagaling sa disiplina ng kasaysayan at women's studies. Ano? Habang pinapakinggan ko kayo, naisip ko si, ano eh, si Emilio Jacinto dun sa kanyang article na kalayaan. Kasi yung mga konsepto na binabanggit nyo kanina ay tugmang-tugma no? dun sa mga uh, Pilipinong konsepto natin. No, ang napakalapit nung dinidiscuss niyang katuwiran. Ito yung article niya na ang title, Kalayaan. Dinidiscuss niya doon ang katuwiran, karapatan, uh, katarungan. Ano, yung kalayaan ay ang kagustuhan mong gawin, ang, ang karapatan mong gawin, kung ano yung gusto mong gawin nang hindi nakakatapak sa katuwiran ng iba. No, tapos tinatalakay din niya yung linis ng kalooban, no, yung dangal, yung pagpapahalaga sa karangalan. So palagay ko, ito rin yung ating mga katutubong konsepto kung ang pag-uusapan natin ay etika. At uh, um, sa women's studies, napaka-importante rin ng usapin ng etika. to hindi lamang yung pagiging uh, contextual kundi yung pagiging gender sensitive then ano at culture sensitive then para tiyaki na hindi tayo nakakatapak ng karapatan ng iba at iginagalang natin ang lahat ng karapatan at na itataguyod ang pagkakapantay-pantay, walang discrimination. So yan yung mga tumakbo sa isip ko habang kayo ay pinapakinggan. At syempre, nakakatuwa yung huling tinanong ni Ma'am Lisa. No? Paano, nata, paano natin i-apply ang ethics sa kasalukuyan nating konteksto na tayo ay papasok sa eleksyon? No, sumasang-ayon din po ako na dapat nagbibigay tayo ng guidelines. No, halimbawa, yung kalinisan ng loob. No, eh, paano mo Eh, siyempre, sabi ni Sir Toto, kailangan magbigay ng halimbawa o sabihin talaga na, sa parang sa akin, call a spade a spade. Di dapat hindi korap, walang record ng pagnanakaw, hindi convicted na tax evader. Parang sa akin, napakaganda pang ikonkreto yung, ano, yung kung general, yung guidelines, isa konkreto pa yan. Hindi, ano, no, hindi... <laughs> Hindi macho na minumura ang kababaihan araw-araw. Di ba yung mga ganyan ba? Hindi hindi marahas. Hindi hindi namumutawi sa bibig lagi yung patay kung patay, patay. <laughs> Di ba yung pagpapahalaga sa buhay dapat eh. At marangal, no? Yung nagtataguyod ng karangalan. Kaya Dito sa atin sa UP lagi nating ine-emphasize, di ba? Una yung dangal at husay. So maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po sa mga lumahok sa webinar na inihatid sa inyo ng General Education Team. Uh, nais ko pong pakasalamatan ng aking mga kasama sa GEC Si Sarduka, si Jerome Cruz, Chris Starka, si Kendrick. Um, si Kendrick, uh, ang atin pong assistant moderator for today. At saka si Say, uh, Hazelyn Trinidad, Kendrick Buduan. Yan po yung kanyang full, full name. Si Kendrick po, alam nyo, ay ano din, uh, philo major din. Yan. Kaya... Malaki po ang kanyang uh, role sa sa episode na ito sa pag-oorganisa ng pagpili ng mga tagapagsalita at uh, pagpili uh, ng mga pag pagtitipo ng mga tanong at nais ko ring pasalamatan si BC Test na kasama natin every webinar para buksan ang ating talakayan at Ngayon po ay nandito pa rin siya na kasama natin hanggang ngayon. Salamat po at paalam. Salamat po. Picture po tayo, panelist. Okay. So dapat naka-ano tayo? Gallery? Ah, 
Yan. Ama, yung mag, an, an, nakalagay din ho yung photo ops ho natin na tayong lahat. At ano lang tayo, ma'am, tayong mga panelist. Apa, uh, okay, ngayon, kuhanan po natin. I-on natin ang ating mga video. Go so, visit us. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, nakabalik ako, ano na, nakabalik ako. <laughs> may meeting ako ng ano, may meeting ako na, ng 10 o'clock, so nakabalik ako ng mga 11... Uh, past 11. Nakikita po dito sa participants, meron pang 1,000 na nandito. Kaya maari pa kayong magbigay ng mga guidelines ninyo sa election ngayon habang tayo ay nagkukuha na ng picture maliban sa mga nabanggit kanina. Sige po, picture po tayo. 1, 2, 3. Isa po po. 1, 2, 3. Maraming salamat, BC Tess. Ikaw ba, anong guidelines ang ibibigay mo for the election? Ako? Si BC Tess po ay philo major din yan. O, oh, di ba? Solid ang philo department dito today. Uh, oh. Ako, unang-una siguro, lalo na sa konteksto ng Pilipinas, uh, unang-una, number one sa listahan ko, no, sa guidelines ay, uh, syempre, kilalanin ang mga kandidato sa pamamagitan ng uh, 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 pag, pagbabasa sa mga uh, akmang resources no? uh, or batis. Uh, kasi mahalaga yon na hindi tayo nakadepende lamang sa chismis, hindi tayo nakadepende lamang sa sinasabi ng, ng ibang tao na walang basihan. Mahalaga po sa filosofiya na laging may may basis for claiming uh, uh, something no kasi hindi mo maipagtatanggol ang isang claim kung wala itong pinang pina, pinanggagalingan na nabasihan so mahalaga na tama yung mga resources na binabasa natin at sorry may kumakatok no naka-record pa sandali lang po Yon, so mahalaga po na ano, mahalaga na mapanuri tayo ano at hindi tayo maging mabiktima ng ng uh, laganap na fake news. Yon. Kasi kapag nabasa natin, uh, hindi, hindi natin kailangan ipilit yung kung sino yung kandidatong gusto natin eh. Kasi mababasa natin yon sa ating sariling ano, uh, pagkilala sa mga kandidato, malalaman mo naman eh kung sino yung karapat dapat. Yon. Yun yung yun yun siguro yung pangunahin no, sa sa guidelines na maniwala lamang sa tamang resources sa mga totoo na na resources at uh, base doon malalaman mo magkakaroon ka ng ideya uh, sa pagkakilala mo no sa mga kandidato kung sino yung maaari mo talagang uh, bigyan ng iyong boto. Tapos ibahagi mo sa iba Kapag napag-alaman mo, 'di ba? Ibahagi mo sa iba na, "Uy, ito yung basahin natin." Kasi ito yung ito yung may uh, uh, ito yung may uh, ruling na ng Supreme Court halimbawa, yung, yung mga gano'n, no? Kasi mga ebidensya 'yan eh, no? Na magpapatunay sa 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 ugali, sa uri ng pagkatao, no, ng kumakandidato. Kasi hindi masama 'yon na ungkaten kung ano yung kung ano yung uh, uh, mga nakaraan, yung mga ginawa dati ng mga kandidato kasi tutulong sa atin yun eh para makapagdesisyon tayo ng mahusay, no? Kung sino yung ating pipiliin kandidato. Thank you, Busy Tess. Ma maging maalam at magbahagi ng kaalaman. Para sama-sama tayong ano, sama-sama tayong uh, maging tama dun sa pipiliin natin. Saka yung track record, importante. Diba? Kasi yun, alam, kaya nga ano eh. Kaya ano yung kasama yun? Yung pagkakalkal talaga sa ano? Sa nakaraan. Track record yun eh. Pag, o, o pag election, ang daling mga ako eh. Oo. <laughs> diba? Oo. At laging ganun sa election natin, ipapangako yung buwan at bituin. Pero Oo. ano ba yung ginawa? Oo. <laughs> at saka ano rin, mahalaga rin ano, na, nakikita na natin ano sa 
sa sistema ng uh, election na meron tayo. Um, pag election lang, pag election lang bidang bida ay mahihirap. Oo. <laughs> Ang ganda ng mga sinasabi ng uh, participants dito sa chat box. Ay, ganun ba? <laughs> ay, ngipo kami ng kopya ng kay Hasinto kung available. Oh, ma- ma- yes, ma'am Nak. Ah, uh, pwede dapat pwede ko namin maki- ma- makuha. Sige pa dad, papadala ko po sa. Padala niyo naman po. May may pala ng ethics na in ano eh, indigenous forms of moral reasoning. Feeling ko ho dapat isama 'yan. Oo nga, sir. Kasi <laughs> minyo asinto 'yan. Kasi sabi niyo contextual, 'di ba? O <laughs> Philippine studies po ako, kaya lagi ako nag-iisip. Email ko po kayo, mama. <laughs> Sige, salamat po. Apo. Okay po. Email po sa inyo pag nahanap ko. <laughs> Han- hanapin ko agad. <laughs> okay po. Bye-bye, sir. At, thank you. Thank uh, you. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Thank you.